the show as well. Line up right down the middle. Uncle Dale and his power stash are here. Remember, if you are in Austin, Texas, and you find Uncle Dale, rub his power stash for 10 days of good luck. He has a special on right now. Joey Hayes, good to see you. Derek Lindsay, thanks for coming on in. Appreciate you. The gorgeous Sherry Knight has arrived. KPNL, Steve Stockton, good to see you. Rooted in gorgeous sacredness, always a pleasure to have you here. I think we are caught up at this time. Remember, we are having another power show. A great way to support what we do here on Spaced Out Radio is by hitting that subscribe button, ringing that bell, so you know when we are live seven days a week. The Super Chat is open. Kevin and Kevin's Beard from Texas, much love to you, my friend, as those are two separate entities and two separate zip codes. Here we go, everyone. Let's have a great show. From the mountains of central British Columbia to you listening around the world... This, my friends, is Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. We welcome you to tonight's show on our terrestrial affiliates around North America, digitally on TalkStream Live, Revolution Radio, and KPNL. All of our archives are free for you by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Tonight's show is brought to you by Chive Charities. Help make the world 10% happier by visiting Chive Charities today. You can find them on our website. Well, we are here. It is time. I feel like going into a UFC match. You know when they go, it is time. Time! Yes, it is time for another major show here as we talk about the UFO world and everything that is going on with it. You know, the media is anxiously awaiting the release of the UFO files from the Pentagon. We take a serious look at what is coming out of Washington, D.C. as the great debate about disclosure continues. And this time, throughout the week, we've had some major shows. We've had experiencers from last night. We've had journalists come on to discuss this. Grant Cameron came on the show. And now it's about the podcasters. Joining us, two of my good friends from UFO Garage, Joe Strelsky, Ben Jenkins. From the Fenton Files and one of my mentors in this field, Lori and Fenton. And from the Experiencer Support Association, host of Beyond the Tinfoil Hat podcast, we have Ryan Stacy, And we are going to get into it all night long about the UFO Files. What will come in, into it? What will come out of it? We really don't know at this time. And we welcome our panel to tonight's show Thank you so much for joining us on Spaced Out Radio tonight. Thanks for having us, man. Yeah. Oh, look, look at Ryan. Look at Ryan. Yes. Right. I think your beard uh, rivals Joe's beard at this point, really. Oh, man. <laughs> Do that for you, Dave. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> Considering Ryan hasn't taken a shave since I think 2013, it all works out. It all, you know, I mean, it, it's just fantastic. But let's get serious here for a second, guys, because we have some major news to be talking about regarding the UFO files that are said to be released. And you know what? I'm very much looking forward to it. I'm I'm excited about it, but I know I'm going to be disappointed. Lori and Fenton, I want to start with you on this one because you've been following this topic for decades, decades. I'm not going to say how long because I don't want to age you. But I mean, you are one of the <laughs> you are one of the brilliant minds in this field, in my opinion. How do you feel about being potentially this close to any sort of government disclosure? Well, you know, this is a sad topic. Oh, by the way, can you hear me? Okay, everything all right at your end? You are you just fine. beautiful, Lorian. Oh, good, good, you guys, because this is the first time I've been on Streamyard. I had no idea. It worked this well but anyhow so back to our topic now what we're getting tomorrow hopefully getting tomorrow is that the congress passed in december a stipulation requiring the department of defense and the office of the director of national intelligence to deliver an unclassified report
report on unidentified flying objects to Congress. So, and then they said within six months, they have to release it to the public. So what we know so far is that there's about 120 um, reports of sightings, contact. I don't know if there's as much contact, but sightings for sure. And they're mostly military sightings. There are a few uh, public sightings in there I have heard. I can't verify it until we actually read the report, but we'll find out. So this is very compelling that they're thinking about giving us this information. But I have I have to say to all of you out there listening, don't we already know about these 120 <laughs> incidents already? And if we don't, if they're all military incidents that they've been hiding, don't we know about at least 120 others that are made to, that we have seen as a public that are probably much more compelling than what the military has? That's, you know, that's my take on it. It's like, I don't think they're going to give us anything tomorrow that we don't actually know something kind of about already just from, you know, like the Betty and Barney Hill thing, uh, Whitley Strieber, the Hudson Valley event, uh, you know, Phoenix Lights. I mean, there's just so much out there already that the public is so aware of Roswell, um, Maury Island. I mean, the list goes on and on. We've probably got 200, 300 very famous cases that everybody in the public that's into ufology knows about. So what are these guys going to tell us that we don't already know about? That's my question. All right, let's get over to Ryan Stacy here and get a Canadian perspective of this event. Ryan, from this side of the border, are you uh, are you excited about what the Washington D.C. and the Pentagon and the politicians might might bring out? I'm not excited. Uh, I'm very anxious. Uh, I've always looked at this uh, on a neutral line as an evidence base. So I'm a private investigator. So like the evidence is what I need. So as soon as I get that, I'll be able to piece together a thousand different theories that I have around everything that's going on. So I'm very anxious to to have direction after tomorrow. Um, with me, it's always been a balance of uh, what's probable or what's what's possible versus likely. Um, as a, as someone who who also deals with freedom of information requests and providing information between uh, you know private clients and industries and whatnot, we as a habit and a rule of thumb, we we only provide what is requested and is specific to to um, very specific to the language. So there's uh, many opportunities in here where they could provide uh, little information, which is exactly what was asked for, and we could very well be no further ahead. Uh, in the first place. But what I'm excited about the most is that everybody's talking about the subject. And that's, that's what excites me is regardless of what happens tomorrow, we can still remember the fact that, that something has happened that led to this moment and we got them to do something in response to the subject. I'm excited about that, but I'm not really, I don't have my hands down about being all woo about what we're going to read because could be very well redacted. Very true. And and you know what? I, I'm on the same breath here. You know, I, I know what I want, but I know I'm not going to get it. It's still like Christmas Eve. And here I look at it and I think, oh gosh, I really want that remote control toy car, but I have a feeling that Santa's bringing me a nice pair of slacks and brown socks to match. I really do think that. Joe and, and Ben from UFO Garage, let's get your take on what you're, you're thinking is going to be happening here. Dave, you should have let us go first, dude. They are smart. You know? <laughs> They're way smarter than us. <laughs> hey, no, I, man, I, I think I think we all kind of like have this same little feeling. You know, I, I totally agree with, with Lorian. And like, you know, there, there's so many other things out there that we can look at and we can point to. Uh, but ultimately, I, I think in my, in my personal opinion, like, Am I excited? I'm totally excited. Do I think it's cool that this stuff is going to come out? Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. But for my own personal sake, I kind of want to stay on this side of the fence and be pleasantly surprised. Then, you know, jump ahead and be like way too excited and then be just totally let down. Right. Because I think we all get that feeling that it might be a little bit of a letdown. So, like, I'm happy right here on my side of the fence you know it's just waiting to be pleasantly surprised yeah me too I, ben 
Yeah, I think it's 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 all about perspective. I think all of your listeners, Dave, uh, which I mean, if you're here listening, if you're listening to us right now, like you are here, like you are a part of history. Uh, and that's something to be said. I think we won't realize it until years from now when this is in history books. Uh, but what I think is really important right now is to realize that we are a part of this unprecedented moment between culture and what we've been told to believe and live by is something that we're, we're going to be able to carve our own path. And it's, it's all in how we take this, this huge, uh, we, we think of tomorrow as being like, you know, the, the uh, June 25th, uh, the government's going to finally say U, uh, UFOs and aliens are real. They've already said UFOs are real. They just haven't said aliens are real. And that's the second step. And like, I, I hope that all of us that are listening right now uh, just take that moment to reflect like, hey, you know, a lot of people have good uh, experiences with with E.T. A lot of people have a negative experience with E.T., but we all know that it's happening. And as long as we band together and be positive about that and like just realize as a collective, like, yeah, no, we, we know this is happening. Uh, it, it might not be as big of a shock as the government thinks, you know, we're all going to freak out over. So I hope that we can, um, react in a, in a, a cordial way. And you know what? One of the things that I am looking forward to is seeing a lot of the people's reaction. That's what's important to me because everything they are going to discuss Lorian within this report, study, whatever you want to call it. We may not know all the full cases, but we know the evidence that is there because we are so far beyond, as UFO researchers, what they are releasing right now to the mainstream public. I think the big thing right now is, what do you think is going to be the public reaction when this gets released and as this information over time starts to leak out more and more? Well, I do hope that the public is paying attention, Dave. You're going to hear under the premise that people actually care. You know, I talked to my boss the other day and I said, hey, aren't you excited about Friday? And she goes, what's happening Friday? I mean, this is, you know, and these are normal people out there, right? And then I talked to my other boss, uh, another guy, and he actually is really aware of what I do. And he didn't know either, and he really follows what I do. So I was like, oh, my God, no one knows what's going on Friday except for all of us, the UFO yeah. community. So right. having said that, uh, I, I'm very happy that we're all paying attention. And I hope that because of Friday, the rest of the world jumps on board and says, uh, hey, you know what? These whole UFO guys in the Washington Post and the whatever, the New York Times and the Senate, and everybody is saying this has got to be real. So maybe I better start paying attention. I mean, that's my hope out of all this. And what was the question again? Well, I think you just <laughs> answered it. You know, I mean, to be blunt, I mean, the public reaction to everything is, Lorian, is going to be quite interesting to see if this convinces more people in the mainstream, more people in the mainstream media, and just, you know, everything of what is happening. You know, I mean, we're going to get into the secrets of this and why a lot of this is going to be reacted later on in the show, but the public reaction, I think, is going to be very important to what happened, because the one thing that I have noticed over time is whether it's through video games, whether it's through Hollywood, whether it's through individualism and social media, we have become very desensitized on many of the things that are happening in this world. And we're so focused on what is happening around us in our own little communities that we build individually that we're not looking at the big picture anymore. More and more people are tuning out from the mainstream media because they can't handle what is seen on, uh, you know, because media has become so political and politically dividing over the last couple of years. So, I mean, I'm curious to see if anybody is even paying attention, Lorian. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with you. And the interesting part to that is we have gained people in the community over the last six months to a year. We have been and gaining slowly and slowly. I mean, I got a phone call the other day from a lady who runs a metaphysical 
conference and she's asked me to speak at it about ufos there's a crossover starting to happen and i was at an event the other night with stanley krippner the famous parapsychologist out of uh berkeley and he is absolutely um uh yeah there we go okay i was hearing myself sorry folks um so um The bottom line, Stanley said this, and it was very important. I want everybody to hear this. He said, people that are in other fields of scientific study, including parapsychology, psychologists, even MFTs are starting to wake up to the fact that people out there are actually seeing something and experiencing something. Now, whether it's just seeing a UFO or having alien contact, it's becoming more of a topic of discussion. They aren't poo-pooing it. And the different types of, like I said, this metaphysical conference has asked me to speak about UFOs at a metaphysical conference. So there's different groups out there. People have been into consciousness, like ions and famous groups of uh, consciousness studies that are starting to ask people in the UFO community to come over give them a shot in the arm and tell them about what this whole ufo thing is all about now that it's becoming a solid reality within our media and i think that's important ryan what's your your thoughts on that how do you see people in the metro toronto area starting to react to this because it has been recent where both the canadian television corporation and the canadian broadcasting corporation have been broadcasting this story the national post recently had a major article on it. But the one thing that I'm noticing missing in regards to all of these Canadian journalists who are now picking up this story after being three years too late is not a single journalist has asked any of our politicians or anybody of note what is happening in Canada regarding this subject. I think it's ignorant journalism. It's it's weird journalism that you have them reporting that this is happening in the U.S., but not asking Canadian people and Canadians, uh, uh, politicians in the know, right to the prime minister, that is this happening here? We don't see that happening. So what what's your take on what's happening north of the border? mention all, all that too because there there are some there's a journalist named uh, daniel otis who 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 is actively catching on to this bug right at the right time and he is asking questions not so much towards the politicians per se but towards the industries involved at the perfect time and he's getting some answers which is which is really uh which is helpful for my work as well because as a private investigator that's the credentials that i'm leading to these conversations so right off the bat I indicate the tone on which I'm trying to have a conversation when I identify myself as an investigator. So having having a journalist do that, uh, at least on that part, is beneficial. I don't know where his uh, why or whether he's been in contact with politicians per se, but it's definitely something I would encourage the next time I would talk to him. Interesting enough, uh, the political approach, I just had a two-hour special with Victor Vigiani uh, on our podcast, Beyond the Tinfoil Hat, previously tonight and we talked about the political approach as well and and the information that i got from him um is that even himself uh it has tried to do the political approach uh within the canadian uh borders but has not done that recently and i don't understand why so i don't know why no one is doing it i'm willing to take a crack at it however uh, and i have tried myself but again, with the labels that I have, it's not being taken ser- seriously because I identify as a citizen journalist, not an actual journalist. Um, <clears throat> but then, but my main concern, so I just want to kind of emphasize that there's the investigative part and the research part, the analyst part, but my, my clients per se are the experiencers. So, so from my, when I'm looking into the phenomenon, when I'm looking into this disclosure uh, movement, my my fear and my worry is not the information, it's, it's how everyone's going to react to it because we have people who, who report to us in confidence uh, and, and there are a group of people that are affected negative about it, uh, negatively about it. And I'm concerned that if this becomes a positive on the research side of things, that that would enhance the negativity or the, 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 the fear factor that's, in, that's instilled with all these other phenomena because it's, it's, we can quickly associate all these other things within the, the ultra spectrum 
of, of, uh, of paranormal activity, if you will, because that includes everything, um, <clears throat> by getting one yes from this. So this is a really, this is a loaded answer that we're getting. Cause so strategically speaking, it would be easy for them to say no, because then none of it exists. But if they say some of it exists, all of it has to exist. And then this is going to open up a Pandora's box and being in the position where I am in, <clears throat> where we cater to the anxiety and all, and all that from those who are affected by the phenomenon, I'm going to be busy as hell. And I'm not looking forward to that. Well, let's bring in uh, Ben here from UFO Garage, because you and Joe a couple of weeks ago probably, in my opinion, gave the best humanitarian interview of Luis Elizondo that he has had. And I know Luis, I think, was scheduled for like an hour with you guys and ended up going two and a half hours just talking about everything. And that's the impact and the power you guys have with your great podcast and UFO Garage, which can be found on YouTube. And I highly suggest everybody subscribes to it. But for you guys, you know, being kind of, I, I don't want, you're not experiencers. Well, kind of, you've both seen something in the sky, but, but being outsiders who are on the inside, if, if, if I could say that politely and yeah, without, without insult. That's 100% correct. <laughs> When you guys get on there and you got Elizondo for two and a half hours and you really, you know, made him human to the public. And I, I can't stress that enough. Everybody should go check that out because, I mean, the first I, I knew that the first words that came out of his mouth when he was talking about being jealous of, uh, b of Joe's beard and, and hair, that it was going to be a power show for you guys. But when you guys humanized him and then uh, started talking some UFOs, what did you get out of that subject in going over this we got about two minutes until we go to break yeah i mean uh dave thanks for saying all that because you know make me and joe are small potatoes and we're just so lucky to be you know a part of this uh a tribe that you've created and we've created as a community uh so thank you for saying that but man the, the honestly my honest opinion in under 30 seconds is lou elizondo is 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 a human being i my family is is all uh, uh my my grandfather my older brother uh my uncle are all police officers they have a job and a duty and a respect for the public and protecting the people that they love and not only that but their their community and at the end of the day you, you, a lot of people are afraid of cops nowadays but uh, at the end of the day they're they're at a job they're they're real human beings and that's what I think we got to the root with with Lou Elizondo is that he's a human being with with interests, his, his own history, his own interests, and he's honestly I, we had a great time with the guy. Uh, that's if you want to like understand the the cosmic universe, uh, maybe that's not the podcast for you. But if you want to get to know Lou on a personal level, maybe that's the one to listen to. And Joe, your thoughts? We got one minute. Yeah, man. I, I mean, I think I think humanizing people in general, just in this in this 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 whole topic. I mean, the, the experiencers are, are always looked at as like something strange, something weird, something foreign. Then you got these these intelligence people and they're like these creepy men in the black, you know, and they're all like in the background doing crazy stuff. And it's like, you know, if you really want to kind of get to know these people a little bit, you know, you, the, the hard hitting questions are awesome. But also like just opening up and becoming a, a person and having that person become a person, you know, you make this certain connection. And the further you go with that, the more you talk to them, you know, the more they might open up a little bit, you know, because you treat them like a human being. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of, of read between the line moments, I think. Uh, if, you, if you listen to our our conversation, Joe had a great question about, hey, are you an experiencer? Because, I mean, I think a lot of your listeners, Dave, and, and people uh, uh, that are a part of this podcast on a regular basis, you kind of know when somebody has seen some stuff. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. All right. The UFO podcast debate on June 25th continues right after this. Ryan Stacy from Beyond the Tinfoil Hat, Lorian Fenton from The Fenton Files, Joe and Ben from UFO Garage. A great panel tonight for you to enjoy. All right, we're clear. We Sorry are. about the, the radio thing. I'm trying to figure. I have these. <clears throat>
headphones. I'm trying to pair them, but it's not working. Oh, that's all right. What happened okay. to your headphones, right? Well, I got a Mac, and the Mac doesn't have any peripherals, so I have to use Bluetooth. So I have mine are currently paired to my phone, and I'm not able to do all the technological things without resetting my computer. So, but you uh, have a you have a nice glowing black box over there. That's a Borg cube. Nice. <laughs> That's cool. nice. Right. Lorian, Lorian, it's great to I I've been I I've been meaning to to try to get a hold of you. I, I emailed you. I I was hoping you didn't get possessed by the last time we we were at that haunted place last time we saw you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have been. You guys won't believe what I've been going through. Are we totally off air? No, Dave? we are still live on YouTube just like usual. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to say this. I was the person, the only person, who was dealing with John Lear for the contact in the desert this weekend. So I had to interview him, and uh, I've spent the last five days trying to deal with that situation and get it, uh, get the video recording that we did together um, edited and to the guys at Contact in the Desert to put up for Sunday's uh, presentation with John Lear. That's so cool. I didn't. I dropped into the black hole of the John Lear life. Yeah, that's not. I, that's not what I expected you to say. I that's like way that way either. cooler. <laughs> I was hanging out with John Lear. I was hanging out with John Lear. We were like, watching. <laughs> I love John. He's something else, man. He and I have known each other for a long time, and it's been a ride. And I just I love him. And he did a pretty good, damn good job for Contact in the Desert this year. I'm awesome. very happy with it. That's Very cool. cool. Lorian, are you able to turn down your microphone just a little bit? You're a little bit hot. Yes, I can. I'm trying to figure out where where are the controls in um, StreamYard? Uh, no, it'll be on your computer end, not on StreamYards. Um, oh, okay. Well, hold on. Oh, it, it doesn't have it, does it? You're right. Okay. Okay, automatically adjust microphone. Let's turn that off for starters. There we go. Mic volume. Yes. How's that? that? I'm. I'm. Oh, better. You, Way better. That's ex- yeah. Okay. You, it, it it actually is in Streamyard. Just so you know. Is Dave. it? Is, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, whereabouts? Uh, you go to settings. Go to audio. Go t- to unclick automatically adjust oh, microphone. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. Now. Learn okay, something I'm every pulling, day. Well, <laughs> Tell me when I'm sounding the best. Right okay? now. Right now. Don't move it. Okay. Okay. I'm leaving it at 35. Perfect. That's where our magic number is. Okay. Perfect. Because I, I can okay, adjust. There you go. I, I, could, I could adjust it from here. So that works for ah, me. Ah, see, there you go. We learned something new today, guys. Rock the Gaspar. That's what I got to say. Our listener with the last name of Gaspar, I always call him Rock the Gaspar. Yes. yes. Mark the Gaspar. Mark the Gaspar. Exactly. Oh, Super Lou is here. Super Lou is here uh, from Unidentified Celebrity Review. Uh, he told me he was going to start wearing a cape on his episodes. He he's, he hasn't got, come through with that yet. Um, you know, I'm a little upset about that. Hi, Nicola. Hi, Whirl Omar. Welcome to the show. Uh, yeah, so good. Back to some more normal guests. Yesterday's guests were completely whack a ding hoy. Oh, that's not nice. That's not nice. That's... Well, maybe it is. Maybe it actually means something very nice. What's a whack a ding hoy, anyhow? I don't know. I, I kind of want to find out now. <laughs> Me too. Mm-hmm. All right. You know what? I mean, what the hell are you looking at? Stonehenge. 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 Oh, we're reporting that you got a little model of Stonehenge in the background, isn't that, Ryan? Is that what that is? Yeah. Spinal Tap is one of our favorite movies of all time, and and it's just funny because it's small, (laughs) just like a Spinal Tap. (laughs) Stonehenge. Stonehenge. No one knew who they were. A whole whole bunch of stuff here. You conversation pieces. Love it, man. So, Ryan, are you? Where are you living? Are you in Ontario? Where are you? Yeah, I'm in. I'm in Ontario, uh, Northern Ontario. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So, how, how'd your hockey teams do this year? 
I, I, I'm not, I haven't really been, <laughs> not very well. Uh, 67. Yeah. yeah. 67. Uh, Lorian, you, you rubbed off on Joe because Joe's been asking all of our guests that same exact question. Like, <laughs> Hold on, guys. Oh, really? We're coming up here on five seconds here. Big thank you to Chad and Michael for the super chats. Here we go. Second half hour of Spaced Out Radio is now underway. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We really do appreciate your listening ears. want to remind you that if you've missed portions of this show or others, check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website, spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show. We continue on tonight with the UFO Podcasters Show. We have Lorian Fenton from the Fenton Perspective. Joe and Ben from UFO Garage are here. And we have Ryan Stacy from Tessa, based out of Ontario, and his podcast, Beyond the Tinfoil Hat. And we are talking June 25th, what's coming out, what's not. And we are talking about, right now, the whole idea that the public probably isn't going to get much. The public may not even pay attention. But let's head over to Washington, D.C. And, uh, Lorian, let's start off with you here for a couple of seconds, if you don't mind, because I really want to get into the idea what your sources are telling you. What will be in the report? What will not come out? Well, as you know, my source is Melinda, and her source is Jim Semivan. So the only thing I've heard from Melinda, and I think she's mentioned this on your show before, is that Jim said at one point there would be some surprising uh, things coming out in the report. Now, what's surprising to Jim Semivan may not be surprising to all of us, so I'm not quite sure what that all means. But I will tell you this. The one part that bothers me about what everybody said about this that could be very surprising to all of us is the fact that they still think everything's a threat. And that's what this whole uh, report was based on about the fact, let me see if I can find it here, because I brought up um, the whole, uh, you know, nine yards about why they even did this report in the first place. And uh, the legislation passed in December of 2020 stipulates that the report must include, here's the key words, folks, detailed analysis of unidentified aerial phenomena data and intelligence collected by the Office of Naval Intelligence, the FBI, and the United Unified Aerial Phenomena Task Force. And it was to detect, analyze, and categorize the UAPs that could potentially, here's the kicker, potentially pose a threat to United States national security. That's what this whole report was really based upon, is the fact that they all think within all of our military, FBI, the task force, all these guys, is these UAPs are a threat. And and how are they a threat? Why are they a threat? And this whole bit is all about threat. And, you know, as every one of us who are long timers in this this whole thing, including like people like Linda Moulton Howe, I mean, the list goes on and on. All of us have said the same thing many, many times over. Even J.J. and Desiree Hurtak, who I was with the other night, said to me, you know, if they wanted to eat us, they would have done it a long time ago. <laughs> you know, so here's the deal. Maybe it's much more of a consciousness of uh, reality, except for now we got to throw this little caveat into the ringer, folks. You got to remember, there is most likely a secret space program going on. So how do we know they aren't ours? And I'm just going to leave it at that. Ryan, what's your response? Uh, well, okay. So details, you have to define detail and you have to define potential and you have to define threat. All those threat. three words are, are subjective. 
uh, to the individual who is writing the report, reviewing it, and those three words will be uh, interpreted and manipulated a thousand different ways. But the evidence is within uh, that report will have to be testimonial or have to be documentative evidence, the best evidence under the circumstances. So we would have to accept that as face value because that leaves the possibility of them saying it's uh, giving little information, which which we consider to be little information, but that might be their version of detail. And it also opens up the possibility of, of them not considering it a threat based on everything else they haven't disclosed and everything else they know. Uh, and if they think it's a threat, then it would have to be a universal threat or a United National a United Nations threat, which means it's a threat for everyone. Um, it's 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 a pretty it's a pretty loaded. Um, there's a lot of room in there for for them to sneak by. So from 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 my experience in in combing through legal documents and whatnot too. So on the Canadian side of things, uh, I I do know that in certain reports when when uh, the Royal Canadian Air Force and NORAD was asked to, and I think Otis was the one. To get, I could be wrong. Uh, to get this soundbite or this 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 um, this uh, this wordage, but they're not particularly interested in commenting on on anything that's not credible. And that was in response to what our Canadian government thought of the of this uh, Tic Tac scenario. So there's. And that's my perspective. Of course, I don't know where Dave is on this, but being a Canadian and understanding my perspective of United States politics in general, um, you know, there, there, there's, there's that plethora of, of concern coming from the source. But I'm also equally excited because I understand the transfer of information. So when something happens here in Canada, uh, I can confirm through my research uh, in my 2019, uh, 2020, sorry, 2020, yeah, rep Canadian Current Events Survey. I was able, I'm able to confirm that NORAD is still dispatching, uh, um, still dispatching aircraft to chase objects that are reported as anomalous and at high rates of speed. They are providing service reports, and when they complete these service reports, that is basically a detailed report that gets sent to the United States, and then the investigation gets carried on. So from my understanding, as things are happening, and the United, so if the United States may be having the information that we could use to understand what's happening here. Lured in the Depths is saying in our chat room, and I like this, normally I don't take comments until hour number two, but I think this one is important, Ben and Joe, moving forward. She says, am I the only one who takes it all as they're making it seem as if it's really just China or Russia ahead of us that's also listed with all the threatening talk? Yeah, dude, I mean, it's 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 very possible, you know, but they're, they're also, you know, it's such a fine line that they have to walk to say, like, Oh yeah, it definitely is Russia or it definitely is China. Like it almost seems like they would rather say it's UFOs <laughs> than it's Russia or China. You know, that's kind of the vibe that I get from them. Yeah, there's been some talk about that and you know, there's been a few things dang, I can't I, you know, I can't remember the off perfect, the top of my it's head. It's the perfect but, cover. Yeah. Like, yeah but, oh, we don't know. <laughs> but you got to look at it a little further if it is Russia. Why is it in American airspace and how come no one knew it was coming? So then there, you got to look into all the parameters around who allowed that to happen and whether or not they had the technology to get past all of our sensors. So, oh, yeah. so whoever, whoever's in control of that technology doesn't give two poops about the rules. So uh, yeah, they don't have the to tell anybody what is, they're doing. That's also what, listed with all the threatening talk right so yeah and, if it flies into our airspace and we can't track it and we can't figure out how to get it it's 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 going to be considered as a threat to them also if it's our technology what better place to test it than out in open waters where nobody can watch and observe and then we get we get a uh, uh what i've told is not the complete video a partial video uh of 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 with reactions that aren't anywhere close to panicking that uh, seem to be calm and that to me my analysis of that is they must have been briefed either prior to witnessing the event or when the videotape was then recorded because 
Otherwise, they, they should be losing their 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 marbles at yeah. at the win. That does I, not I mean, make sense. I mean, but like, yeah, I mean, it, test it over the waters and stuff, right? Yeah, absolutely, I agree. But I mean, don't you think they're testing it over over the land too? I mean, there's a lot of people That's seeing it. stuff, you know. So it, it's it's. It is kind of interesting how they talk about all this stuff happening out in the ocean in the middle of nowhere, but we're all seeing it right over right over our heads. Well, you technology know? has also increased. The other 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 things we're not looking at for evolution. It's it's just it's just like if we accept the possibility that Roswell happened, if that is a fact, and they and they they got craft then they reverse engineered it. Technology has advanced all this time, and that and it just very well belonged to us. It just. And, and it was just an isolated event where there may have been bodies. They died, and that's it. That's the end of that. And then we just – that was a one-time thing, and then we just reverse engineered everything and then evolved. Look at our cell phones. Look at the technology. Look at all – everything else that has evolved over the years. It's very more likely, in my opinion, uh, that we're observing technology that belongs to us. And and then the the red tape and the, and the, the all this time is to figure out – the best way to explain um, that either we have technology that the United Na- rest of the United Nations don't know about, or we have technology that we've all been collaborating about that the entire world doesn't know about. And there could very well be a push towards, congratulations, check it out. We have this new technology. This is the scientist. This is the guy who made it. This is the team who made it, blah, blah, blah. We're now moving forward to a new age with this new technology. This is a scenario that could very well be happening as well. But the UFO community, some people might perceive that, not accept that, because they want it to be aliens. Because the yeah. the ET phenomenon is a total separate phenomenon, and just because we can confirm that this this craft exists, we can does we now have to wonder who, how it's being piloted. We have technology for remote viewing. We have uh, you know uh, drones. All this technology exists to make it possible. And then then in order for it to be a threat then um, that means they can't determine the intent. And if it's not a threat, then they know what it is and they know who's piloting it. And they had a conversation with the individual to understand that there isn't, uh, they know their intent on using said technology. And that might be the answer we get to. And then we can speculate with that. But where would you accept that as an answer? I guess I would throw that back to you guys. Well, I, you know? want, I want to get Lori and Fenton's uh, perspective on this. Yeah. Uh, okay. No pun intended with the Fenton perspective, her podcast name. Lori, in, <laughs> in regards to the threat narrative, Russia, China, do we, you expect over the next little bit of time that those two countries or, are going to be eliminated from the conversation? Because the people I'm talking to behind the scenes already know it's not Russia, it's not China. What we do know is that in order to get funding, you have to create a threat that the United States may be behind on this in order to secure that funding for future research and add people to that team. Moda. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely true, Dave, what you just said. Um, As far as the threat thing goes, you're right. It's it's a means of getting money. Now, I'm going to take everybody back a few years, back to 2015, when Tom DeLonge got on his first little podcast thing with the white background and said, we're going to tell everybody the truth and it's coming. Okay, that was back in 2015, you guys. This whole thing has been orchestrated by people who do orchestration and i'm using that word in quotes for a living that is their job they decide what you get to think you get to understand and you get to know about within the military the cia the nsa you know all the departments us as the peons out here in the world of reality Okay, so back in 2015, they had already planned to use Tom DeLong to bring this forward, use To the Stars Academy as another vehicle to get money and to get our research from the UFO community. Everybody forgets that once Tom DeLong started To the Stars, they went to Ray Hernandez of the Free Organization and offered him money for all of his research on contactees. Okay, they went to other organizations and wanted all their databases about their UFO sightings. They wanted to know everything. You know why? Because they wanted to give it right back to the government, because that's who these guys are in the end 
working for. I can tell you this right now. Lou Elizondo and Chris Mellon and possibly a couple other guys knew this was just a means to an end. About four to five years down the road, they were moving on to getting back into the government and having a job with these guys so they could run, they could become, run the new Magic 12, be the guys that were in charge of everything on how we think, feel, or perceive the UFO phenomena. And they're dripping it out really slow. I told all my friends, including Melinda and the whole gang, back in 2015 when Tom came out, I said, I'll bet you $100 it takes 20 years to get to the point where they actually admit that we are outnumbered, outgunned, and out technology and there are actual ETs out there. It'll take them, you know, it, maybe it's going to be 10 now. I don't know. But I, that time I said 20. And because they want a whole new generation of kids growing up knowing that this could be a reality. They can't just pop it on our, our consciousness and expect the older people not to flip out. It just isn't going to happen. They know better. They did, they've done stuff. Studies in mind control for so long that they know exactly what to do to get us all to that place where they want us to be. And they're only going to tell us so much. And I'm sorry, but that's how I feel about it. <laughs> no, I, and I, I don't. I, I'm reading. I'm reading the comments in the chat room, and and I can see everybody's agreeing with you regarding this. And and I don't think there's many people out there who would who would not agree with the fact that there is a narrative here and the fact, Lorian, that you know there's a lot of old people still on this planet who believe that anything that comes from the sky is Armageddon waiting to happen. It is That's demonic. True. It is it is everything. And this is this is part of the problem with this because the younger generation, if I look at my children, my oldest is 22, my youngest just turned 8. All right? And if I look at my children, I can sit there and say they are extremely spiritual. They're not religious, but they have a long list of spiritual beliefs. They believe in psychic ability. They believe in ghosts. They believe in UFOs and aliens and Bigfoot. It's, it's not that far off, whereas people of my generation and up tend to be all negative and, and wanting to poo-poo the subject the minute it comes up. They want to laugh at it. They want to point fingers. That guy believes in UFOs or that guy chases Bigfoot in his spare time. Can you believe that? That's the way our generation is. It's very negative towards the subject. So I can see the hold off on that very easily, Lorian. Yes. And uh, one last thing that goes with that is that I firmly believe that when we're ready, that the aliens themselves or the extraterrestrials or whatever they are, and I don't know, maybe they're light beings from another universe. I don't know. Just like in the movie Midnight Express. I mean, I, I firmly believe that, that that could be the case. Maybe they're just going to pop in one day and say, you know what? You guys are ready now. You know, maybe it's going to take getting through this whole experience for 20 years, 40 years or 60 years for us to get to the point where they say, well, you know, enough of them believe in us now. Enough of them are consciously aware and we're going to show ourselves and we're going to be part of the universal consciousness and the physical 3D reality of planet Earth. And I hope that happens. I was told by somebody in the know who is very close to this subject saying, Dave, do not think for a second that our grandchildren will be walking on this planet with aliens beside them. He goes, it's going to happen. It's inevitable. We just have to prepare. We have to wait for some people to die off. We have to make sure that this generation is knowledgeable about it because right now people are not ready. We're ready. The UFO community is very ready. But there's a lot of people on this planet, a.k.a. the majority, that are not ready for this type of interaction. And But he said, our children and our and potentially our great-grandchildren are definitely going to be seeing extraterrestrials as part of their life. And I took that as a, as a deep breath. That was one of those deep breath moments that I had where I was kind of like, whoa. That hit just me. like the just like the bar in Star Wars, man. We're gonna be doing that. <laughs> oh, I hope so. in the cantina. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. The kid. I want the, I want that party. I want a party with aliens. I want everything to be like cool. Like, hey, you're cool. We're fine. We're not eating each other. Let's yeah. play some music, man. Let's I, do what it. I want to do. I want to find out what kind of drugs they're taking, man. I want to yeah. know what their LSDs like, right? Stardust. Oh, no. Stardust. <laughs> yes. Oh my so, goodness, you guys are way like- too wild. Way too was, wild. Go ahead, Ryan. I was just going to say that was a that's a very likely scenario if you give in consideration of of the fact that the people in in my age range, so I'm 35 and and perhaps younger, um, may be getting into politics, maybe getting into you know uh, this type of atmosphere uh, as regular careers, but as a believer and as a, as as a, you know an experiencer. So so we're going to start to have insiders. Uh, who are involved in this movement, uh, actively pushing from the inside too. So all that progression in the jobs and the industries as they grow up into it, not just in the educational system, but in the, in the, as part of the anarchy, as you know, that's, that's known for civilization, it's going to be embedded in, in, in that way too. So, and when you mentioned that people dying off and the, the current people that are in charge and governments and all this other stuff, and the people that are responsible for the cover up, if there is any, they'll be dead. And, and, and then at, at which point uh, we can, they can confess because then it becomes a scapegoat by saying that was them. Uh, and, and this is us and let's move forward. And, and, you know, and, and, that, and that's kind of what Lou, uh, when we, uh, Joe and I interviewed Lou said, was like, Hey dude, like my generation messed this up and, yeah. and we're, we're reaping the benefits and, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. I just like, I thought that was really powerful what you were saying. Like, and, and, it, and it has been said uh, by, I mean, I'm sure by a lot of other people, it's just that Lou's very much in the spotlight right now. I'm sure there's a lot of other people that are, you know, at, at kind of the same caliber. I mean, we uh, uh, talked to Gary Voorhees all the time. He he actually saw the the Nimitz event. He, would, he was there. He's been saying the same stuff that Lou has been saying, you know? Uh, so it's interesting I think what people maybe need to pay attention to is is that these people have seen this stuff. They're they're of this caliber of of this public awareness, you know, trust because they're they are this uh, military. Everybody wants to trust their military and the people that protect him. Like, yes, yes, we we have to do that. Like, if you can't trust the people that protect you, like, well, who who are you trusting? But uh, yourself, yourself, my you step on my Wait, lawn. I don't but know, man. You do trust in yourself. So, so from my perspective, for the Experience Your Support Association, like there, there's the investigative part that I handle, that my team handles, revealing this, uh, assisting the civilians uh, on on that part. But our ultimate goal, when we uh, with our academy, which is in production right now, it's called the Interstellar, the Academy of Ufology and Paranormal Studies, giving into light of a new generation of ufology, like the uh, uh, taking from the old, applying the new, and starting a reborn birth in the investigative process. So it's also important for me to understand how this works out to figure out whether or not we have to send our sightings to the government to uh, and to assist in that on a business. Point, or we have to do it on our own. But our main goal is to teach the experiencer how to investigate. So like I mentioned, I'm a private investigator. I own a private investigating firm. TESA is the subdivision of that firm. So we will be teaching people how to investigate their own phenomenon Dude. so that they can rule out all of the fluff ahead of time. And then when they've done all that and uh, – they're still stuck with something and then they send it back to us and I re- our team relooks at it and then we can reinforce it. But the, the idea is that we don't need validation from anyone but ourselves, but you still need to investigate your own sighting because that's where the belief comes from. I love that so that, much. And, and that comes from yeah. as a continuation because I, I used to be the national uh, chief investigator for MUFON Canada and I was the director of field investigating training for MUFON National for a, a little bit. I left that because I wanted to do what I wanted to do now for the entire world and not just for MUFON. Yeah. So that's kind of where yeah. that's all coming from. Can I, Laurian, can I bring gonna, up something? I'm, I'm going to get you to save that thought until we get back from the break here, Lorian, because we have literally run out of time here in hour number one of Spaced Out Radio tonight. UFO podcasters taking a look at ufology and what's happening 
in the disclosure world. From the Fenton perspective, Lorian Fenton on Revolution Radio. Beyond the tinfoil hats, Ryan Stacy, And we got the big men from UFO Garage, Ben and Joe. Great panel tonight. We'll continue with the talk of UFOs right after this. All right, we're clear. I'll let you guys talk to the to the uh, uh, audience here. Who let the dogs out? Who? 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 Dave. 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 <laughs> Dave. 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 Yeah. All right, Dave I'll be right off. back. Remember, we are uh, still live on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> okay. I won't say anything bad about you. Don't oh, worry. That I don't mind. Oh, that, that I don't Dave mind. Just don't Scott. give out any juice. Oh, he's still <laughs> there. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so Ryan, God. what I wanted to ask you was, um, you know, I'm I'm still MUFON section director up here in Northern California, and uh, I've been doing a lot of stuff with my group of people. And one of the things I tell them to do all the time is it really helps if you've got other people that have had a sighting with you, that mm-hmm. they make a report that goes with your story and that they're available for comment on it if they ever need to be because we got to start mm-hmm. validating the fact mm-hmm. that many of us are having contact together mm-hmm. and is that where you guys are jumping off or are you starting with oh. a single experiencer so that? so well to give context um i we've created what's called the ultra spectrum classification system so we are investigating all phenomena paranormal activity uh, psycho psychogenic activity, uh, UFO consciousness, all that stuff. But we're trying to what we're measuring is the experiencer. So our study is 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 why these people are having contact and others are not. And and through that focus, we're we're learning more about the experience through the experiencer. And um, so, but what I'm also doing as well is is I'm bridging that paranormal uh taboo by timelining the individual experiencers events so they're able to make multiple reports and multiple stuff but we investigate them separately but what we handle the case by the experiencer sure so if an experiencer sure. has a paranormal sighting when they're like uh you know younger and then a you uh, sorry it's usually a ufo sighting so okay so if they were to lay out everything on their line typically what i'm finding in my research is that it starts with contact at an early age Correct. As years as years go on, uh, there's paranormal activity and then psychic, uh, uh, some sort of psychic development, and they, and they are Correct. starting look, looking at all of these things as an individual, looking at them separately, but they're not connecting the possibility that maybe the contact is what activated something, and then through aging and evolution and growth, these de- these abilities had developed. So so yeah. so we're now we're now part of. Now time has passed. We're now waking up. We're now developing. We're now connecting. We're now understanding all this other stuff. Coincidentally, while we're getting a push for disclosure and all this other stuff too. So, so and part of that too is educating the ufology community, <laughs> who 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 when I work with MUFON considered paranormal to be like crap, and they yeah, wouldn't. I, touch I, I'll it. tell you someday privately what I what happened to me around that. But anyhow, go ahead. That it's all connected, and you can't believe in one That's thing right. and not the other because paranormal right. simply means not normal. And That's right. and, and I thought I don't know if I created enough noise while I was in there as not, as director of uh, field investigator training, but when I was inside, as they knew I was a private investigator when they hired me, and I and I I um I wrote about this, so I'm not really making this up on the spot. You can read about it later, but I was involved during the business deal with two of the stars Academy and move on. And that was right. the Celtic. And that was just like, I can confirm a whole bunch of things about how it was related on money and the business deal and funding and all that other stuff and the selling and the transfer of information, all that other stuff, the key Correct. witness that could also yep. corroborate or tell me wrong is currently in jail. So, so we don't have really have another, uh, another side of the story to tell me wrong, but I was also involved in all that. And I have all that information uh, about everybody that's involved. Um, yeah. I kind of, I should say this with Dave's in the room, but, uh, but uh, maybe he'll watch it on the replay. But I mean, as far as the Lou scenario goes as a private investigator, I have the opportunity to pull public records. I have the opportunity to view things on a, um, on a legal perspective. And there's, there's questions that I have, but 
the the and if anybody were to look at the, the the information that I have and compare it to the situation, they would consider the source to be not credible. But that doesn't mean there's a negative intent. So so I don't talk about that stuff uh, until I receive confirmation from this you know uh, this report that that you know whether or not stuff that everybody's been saying is truthful. But I have I have inside information that could very well. Um, be damaging to to uh, a plethora of people within the ufology community, but I withhold that. Yeah, I I do too. So you and I should get together um, later and talk yeah, about okay. some of yeah, this. That, Dead right. knows about that. Would be good. It, so. yeah. We got we got sure. about one minute. You know what? Just so you guys know, it's supposed what? to hit 100 degrees here next week. What? what? Yeah. It never no. hits 100 degrees where you're at. That's, the, like, the, impossible. The, well, it's going to be on Wednesday and Thursday, 102. Hey, Dave. No freaking way. Yeah, right. I'm an, I'm an actual Canadian. What is that in Celsius? Uh, 39 degrees Celsius. <laughs> okay, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, next oh. week, all in the 90s, well into the, thir- into the mid to high 30s here. Uh, yeah. All right, so give me two seconds. We got about... Uh, uh, we've got about uh, 30 seconds left before we're coming back. I want to say a big thank you to Jeremy, to, to TH, Chad, and Michael for the awesome Super Chats. It's a great way to support what we do on this show on a nightly basis. We really do appreciate the, the support that way. And uh, we also want to say hello to all of our new listeners who are checking us out for the first time. We are a live radio show, so enjoy. Here we go. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott. Follow Dave on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Facebook Spaced Out Radio Show. Here we go with the second hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We really do appreciate earning your listening ears wherever you are on this beautiful planet we call Earth. We want to say hello to everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates around North America and digitally on TalkStream Live, Revolution Radio, and KPNL. All of our archives are free by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do old Davey the favor Hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Verbomania. Verbomania is your password. Use it wisely, Space Travelers, as the Clam sets the password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website, spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio, and on Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show. We continue on with our panel discussion tonight, UFO podcasters talking about what is going to... be coming out of the Pentagon for UFOs. We have from UFO Garage, Ben and Joe. We have from the Fenton Perspective, Laurie and Fenton. And from Beyond the Tinfoil Hat and the Tessa Research Group, Ryan Stacy And Laurie, and right before the break, you wanted to respond to what Ryan was saying in regards to the idea that there is a bunch of public who really doesn't know what's going on and the truth is always going to be hidden. Uh I think that was what I was responding to, but um, I think I was trying to say that um, I felt that the threat assessment part of this was just a kind of a ruse to get these guys back into a real job. I mean, uh, and it has been all along. And that, and that's just, I wanted to summarize that. that so was can I, I just want to say from with that, it's a good segue to that too. And it's a spitball into what we were talking about on the YouTube part, but like the, I've been watching Lou's body language. I've been watching Lou's, I've been hearing his testimony. I've been cross-examining his videos from other stuff because you do this enough times. You know, there's there's certain, you get little nuggets from all these little things and I've pieced all the puzzle, uh, the puzzle pieces together and all the other, the other stuff. The only thing that I'm having a hard time defining at this moment is the motive behind all of this. So no matter what you look at, no matter what you believe and all these different perspectives and sides of him, there's positive and there's negative, depending on what you want to look at. It doesn't really matter if we get what we want. Um, but the, the job aspect, 
um, resonates with me because I also run the scenario of a dis. Okay, we got to look at the fact that he was an employee of a company, and at some point he was frustrated. He left, and then now we have this, and then we have a team up, and we have pressure and forcing a response. As a CEO of a company who had two companies who have employees. The best way, you know, whenever there's an issue, we keep our mouth shut. But the best way to get us to say something is to force our hand. And and there is evidence to suggest that, or that that proves that Lou Elizondo is an engineer and 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 and, and he has patents in technology that involves uh, um, activity and and craft that very well could fit within the video in which he released. And this one of the scenarios that I try to put it on the criminal side. Just what if, right? Not picking a side, just trying to understand the criminal mind if there was one. And there's evidence to that that exists circumstantially that this may be technology that he has worked on and some sort of financial influence. And perhaps this push and all this stuff is not just a confession of UFOs, but to confess that they stole his tech. And, and and or his 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 patent idea. Now again, that's speculation. That's no. That's 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 all in the mix of everything. But that's an alternative scenario. And if you p- compare that to the fact that he has frustration, which means he has motive to stick it to his boss, and then they try to snuff him out. Like it's just a big bad disgruntled employee. And and with that on his on his. I do have a public record and I do have a private record, which I cannot share or dispose because or, or divulge simply because if I do, that will link Ryan? to his personal life. And I don't want to do that, but I can yeah, confirm I did... that his story. Can is I not interject what something? Yes. I, I need yes. to interject something really quick here because I yes. have just heard in the last two weeks from a guy and mm-hmm. it's not just a guy. It's a group of scientists that have told me that there was the guy a while back that actually developed the Tic Tacs. And I can't go into details about it right now because I'm just doing my research into it. But uh, it's not. And that's weird. a scenario. Well, that's OK. But like if the, it's a scenario that that hasn't really been thought of. Right. No, I, and, and I was just going to say, and I think I really like where you're going with this. But and if we may, go back yeah. to, sorry, I just want to finish my thought. If we go back sure. to the experiencer element that I was talking about in the YouTube section, um, with my research, I'm finding more evidence that we as human beings are the, the, are the element. We are the ability. We are the special ones. We are the hybrids. There's no ET connection. We are the ETs. And there's a lot. So when you, so there's more evidence to suggest that this is our problem than there is out there. And that's where I sit on all of this. I, I, I cannot, I still accept the possibility, but it's not likely in my wheelhouse with all the studies and, and people that I've, I've dealt with and following the information. Okay. So you're not an ET contactee is what you're saying. That's not true. I've, well, I've had, I've had an experience. I haven't solidified whether or not that come from ET. So I have okay. had, I've had a download experience, but I, I still I still accept the possibility that I may have been connected telepathically with another human being versus a, versus an extraterrestrial because it can't confirm who was on the other side. I can just confirm a message was received. Does that make sense? I agree. I agree with you on that because I still to this day I get downloads all the time, and because of what I know about mind control and what they can do, uh, I'm not sure. And I'm not sure it's me from another dimension. That's another whole possibility, or me from the future. So there yeah. you go. And I just I don't want to take take humans off the table. We're quite capable. The technology exists. The motive exists. And if and if 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 Lou is pissed. He's got all the tools and he's done everything right in order to stick it back. And you know what? If he got an answer a, a, out of vengeance, so what? It's still good for the rest of the world. I just want to understand his motive so I can trust him moving forward. Right. Yeah. All right. Let's get to an audience question here. And Ben and Joe, we're going to start with you guys on this one. It's from Nicola, who is asking, why can't we have truth? We, I, need to know what I saw. It was not made here. Man. I, I think I think your truth is your truth, you know? I mean, nobody can tell you what you did and didn't see. And, and you know, I, I think we're getting to a point to where a lot of people who are experiencing this kind of stuff, um, you know, 
I don't say this lightly, but like I, I feel like there's there's more uh, of a, a support behind saying, "Hey, I, I saw this." Now, obviously, that's not going to work with everybody. You know, not everybody's going to believe you, but but your your truth is your truth. I don't think you need somebody to tell you, "Yeah, what you saw was real." Would it be nice? Yeah, I guess so. But it happened to you, and o- only you can can you know kind of deal with that. You know. Ben? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fully agree, man. It it's it's pretty wild like the the amount of people that reach out to us on a, like every single day. Hey, I had this experience. Hey, that thing you were talking about, like you guys are dummies and help, like you, you talk about like dumb stuff and like have fun with the topic, but also the fact that you guys talk about some serious stuff and mix it in makes it more pal- palatable to me, you know, like this, this topic is so traumatic for a lot of people and to throw some humor into it really makes it a little more digestible. Um, and through that, trying to make these, these, these connections, when you're trying to be funny, you actually realize in a moment, you're like, Oh my God, that's what that means. But like, yeah, it's, (laughs) but Ben, people are angry. There's a lot of angry people out there and yeah. not because they're they're not taking the fun out of the subject, but there are people who have had some extraordinarily heinous experiences that would are the cause for for Hollywood horror films in regards yeah. to this topic. And they're also upset because they know what they saw. You know, they may not be aviation experts, but they know what they saw. The 60 plus thousand people in Phoenix, Arizona on March 13th, 1997, want to know what they saw. And these people are getting upset with the game, the cover up, the, the fact that they're not talking about citizens. They're only talking about the military. People are fed up. They're tired of being made fun of for seeing a UFO. There's people who have lost jobs, lost careers, lost families, lost wives and husbands due to divorce, lost everything because they can't handle the very real experiences that they are having and people i i get that they are angry they don't want this subject to be made fun of they see it coming out and they want it all just let us know what is going on man yeah that is a very powerful thing and such a uh, an intricate thing within uh, uh not only western society but all around the world i think we're almost getting caught up to the fact that to to make to make light of a situation is not the same as making fun of it it's you're having fun with it the the people that are that are experiencers they can have jokes within that that community that only they can understand right and you can obviously tell the difference between the two um so um when we talk about this subject th- this is so serious very so serious <laughs> like pretty serious yeah uh joe and i uh are we have seen some stuff but we have talked to and and made very great friends with people like yourself dave like dude you have been through some stuff Lorian, you have been through some stuff uh i mean i i i i we are just so thankful to be a part of y'all's lives in any way and and everybody listening to this like Y'all have, if you've sent us uh, your story, like that is what matters in this entire thing. Like mm-hmm. we're just trying to figure it out. Nobody knows what's going on. And the best we can do is talk to each other and broaden that perspective. I think for so long, this vector has been so straight and narrow and so rigid that it, it can easily be made light of or make fun of in, in a different perspective. Uh, perspective and 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 uh, alter that that scenario from point A to point B. But if we all understand that everybody is going through something like this, you know somebody who has seen something in the sky. You know somebody that has seen stuff uh, something. And the more that this be- this becomes normalized, 
this is not no longer funny. Like this is mm-hmm. serious. Absolutely. Lorian, yeah. I want to get your reaction to that because I know you're an experiencer along with a researcher, you know, there, we try and have fun with it because we're kind of ingrained in this community, but for a lot of people out there, they're tired of the jokes. They're tired of the seriousness there or the lack of seriousness regarding this topic. Do you understand the anger that is out there from people and the frustration considering that regular people such as you, me, and other experiencers really do not have a say in getting our voice out outside of shows like this to get the public understanding that this is way bigger a topic than just a bunch of little orbs playing with FA-18 Hornets of the United States Navy. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Um, well, where to begin on that? Uh, getting our voice out there. Um, I think we're doing a damn good job already. And I think because of this new media attention and shows like uh, UFO Garage and uh, uh, Ryan's show, I think that, uh, and your show and my show, we're all going to have the ability to help the people that are coming into the fore with this, have never heard about it before, don't know what's going on. Uh, Between all of us, we all have different perspectives on it, which is wonderful. And we can all give them something. Now, being frustrated about it myself, yeah, absolutely. Because I really um, have seen some extraordinary things. And I'm just going to say this, and Dave knows how frustrated I am about this. There are many events and uh, many conferences and many things like that where there are people who actually get up on a stage who have never even seen a UFO and are telling people in the UFO community what it's all about. And I'm thinking to myself, how did this happen? You've got to ask that question. How was it the top of the surface that are making it to CNN, that are making it to all these places who have never even experienced seeing a UFO, let alone having contact like myself or Melinda Leslie or um, uh, Kim Carlsberg or Whitley Strieber or whatever, you would think that the person who's actually having the contact and it's confirmed contact like Ryan's looking for, confirmed contact with witnesses and they've seen it too, isn't that guy on CNN talking about the situation? See, that's what bothers me. That tells you how controlled we are by all of these organizations and how mind controlled the regular population is. Go ahead, Ryan. Just uh, two, two things came to mind, too. So like to, to, to add to that, I interviewed Victor Vigiani for two hours tonight before this show. And I went through everything that he's done his entire past that got to the oh, end. Cool. And, I, and I was banking on him telling me, hey, you must be with as much belief as you have. He must be an experiencer. And he told me tonight for the first time, he's never had an experience. He's never seen a UFO. And I was shocked with all, with all the intent that he had put into that. And, 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 and for me, on, uh, as a, looking up to, to people within Canada, he's basically the only guy other than Grant Cameron to, that we can really, uh, we've got slim pickings here in Canada. So, you know, with, in terms of the movement. But to emphasize on the contact part, my role is is like like regardless of what happens or what you believe that you saw like i believe you 100 percent that something has happened my goal is to confirm and validate that what you think has happened is what actually happened because it might be possible that it's still within the paranormal spectrum but you you might think it's a ghost but it's not actually a ghost it might be technology from an extraterrestrial or something like that there's so many there's so many things and variable. So I'm a, more of a, a, a validator. And, and, and through that, there's still confirmation that, Hey, something has happened because we have those, those anxiety. We have that de- de- depression. We have these physical ailments that are left behind, uh, you know, that, that, that indicate that the belief is so strong, but then getting back into the, the, uh, the believer part, what we're, what we're, we're victims of, of seeing this stuff, regardless of how popular it is. And we're not getting validation because they're denying it. And we need that validation so we can feel comfortable. So we know that we are seeing it in this world and not in this world. And just because we see it in our mind doesn't mean it's not happening. It just just needs to identify that that's where the contact is being made. And that's why we can't document it because it's being seen through our psychogenic consciousness. Right. And then to go further into that, um, what's, 
if that's true, we have criminal activity, we have abductions, that's we have we have rape, we have we have so many things that are violent. And if humans are behind that, then I, I'm pushing for criminal charges. So I'm just want to kind of provide how right. how intense I'm looking at this, as this is a huge problem. And if it's humans, yeah. Do you do you think that that's the next step? Is like, oh my god, if, if this comes out that these stories that we have well, that, heard, that's the cover up, though. That's the cover up, and that's the narrative. Because, so you think that's like the root of look? Well, they, they have. Yeah. Let me, let me just get this in, Ryan, if you don't mind. They have yeah. stated, and, and Lewis stated, they're not talking anything previous to two thousand four. They're yes. not talking Roswell. They're not right. talking the Phoenix Lights. They're not talking Betty and Barney Hill, Travis Walton, Stefan Mikulik. They're not talking any of these major cases that have happened throughout the decades. Why not? Why not which, open the panel? Because which makes sense for the marketing of UAP. It's that separation. Absolutely. Right? I, I Absolutely. think someone, I didn't make that, a, a, someone else had said that. I, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm not like given. No, no, that's the absolute truth, you guys. That's what I was saying in the beginning of all this, is they're only going to pick, they're going to cherry pick the ones that are just through the military. They're never going to bring out the other stuff until they actually get to the point 10 years down the road where they're actually going to admit we're having contact. So, you know, this is, it's just... This is a legal process. So, 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 so there's evidence that has been leaked. It's been presented. The government knows what evidence is out there. So the government is responding to the evidence. They're going to provide a disclosure towards the evidence that they know exists. And if if that evidence incriminates anyone, all this time is spent putting in measures or hiding or or preparing for the 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 reaction of the people that's involved. And that's the same method that's used for any case. If someone uh, all of a sudden got caught for murder, there's evidence. And then, and then all of a sudden they're preparing for court. They're going to do everything they can to hide the murder weapon and because they know that they're going down. But if they're going to go down, they want to at least, you know, shave 10, 10 to 15 years off their sentence. And so, so if the government is my labs and doing all this other stuff that we all, that is more possible than uh, more likely than the ET part and the ET part might just be the savior part, the aspect that the, the one that that's trying to, uh, to, to wake us up so we can be prepared for the next for whatever you want to do. A catalyst. Yeah, a catalyst. Thank you. So I'm, I got angel radio playing right now. That's how it comes to me. My ear starts to ring and then I, I, I never know if I'm listening or talking, but uh, you know, so I do feel that the answers are going to create more questions Very but true. it will then give us to give us direction because we're all smart we all understand we just need a little bit of information to to remove some of the stuff from the equation right we got 90 seconds before we're going to go to break here at the bottom of the hour we have ryan stacy lorian fenton joe and ben from ufo garage here tonight question from Vinny and lorian we'll start with you remember 90 seconds is it possible that there are there are ufos but they're not aliens ah yes absolutely just think of the matrix just think of the matrix and there you go there you go folks mm -hmm. that gives you well, that. Oh, i thought okay love i thought that. we were all sharing the 90 seconds okay i love that <laughs> yes you know, I, I agree with that ufos does not mean aliens it just means I'm not, and ufology is the study of things that we can't identify you can't study something we don't have yeah that's right. I, I like the idea of 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 the unidentified is it, the the term experiencer. I like to broaden that spectrum, not to aliens and UFOs, but also to all paranormal, cryptid, ultra spectrum. It, it, ooh, I love yeah. that. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. Yes. Yeah. Like it, I agree. it covers so much, and also politics. So that like that's like another <laughs> fun. <laughs> Little additive, mm -hmm. but like it just covers so much, and it's it's it, it roots from something we can't explain. Mm -hmm. We've well, created what's called the ultra spectrum classification system, which is a upgraded model of the Heineck and Valet classification to uh, to accept the UFO phenomenon as well as everything else under the paranormal spectrum. Well, just, we're, we're going to see we're, we're going to see what happens here as we continue on with a great conversation tonight with Ryan Stacy from Tessa 
as well as Beyond the Tinfoil Hat podcast. From the Fenton perspective on Revolution Radio, we have Lorian Fenton and two of my favorite dudes in ufology, Joe Strelsky, Ben Jenkins, because he's all jinkies about it, from a UFO garage. We'll continue on with the UFO talk here on Spaced Out Radio and your questions if you're in the chat rooms or on Twitter at hashtag Spaced Out Radio. We continue right after this. All right, we're clear, guys. Okay. Right on. It's a good show. So with it. Yeah. So Ryan, I uh, I I reclassified all of the Heineck and the other guys' stuff about 15 years ago, and I was putting it in a book. Okay. <laughs> I just never yeah, finished what? the book. Lorian, I've been uh, waiting for like what three years now. <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm trying, you guys. I you know, the problem is I've got six outlines for six different books on six different topics, and I guess the first one I really am going to have to get done is the one about me. If I get that out yes. of the way, then everybody will leave me alone, yes. and I can go on to my mind control one, my super soldiers, my space program. That's all the, the one facts. I want. I yeah. want the one about Lorian. I want your story. Like, <laughs> like publish. It's so awesome. Oh, well, yeah. it's a it's a cool timeline, Ryan. I'm taking it. I start from my very first experience that I go straight through the book for all my experiences, all my major experiences. And it's oh, just a timeline. Good. I decided no, that was the, the best way to write it because why write about an experience that it doesn't build upon the one you had before? In my it's opinion. All, and then you'll understand yourself as a whole. And that's what we try to do because when, when everybody is reporting, they're, they report at different times. So we don't know it's a significant event at that time. But then we start to work with them and say, what else happened in your life? What else happened? What else happened? And then we have exactly. all Exactly. I hate that because I've done so many interviews <laughs> and I've done – I used to do major research on contactees and I'd yeah. be on the phone with them for five hours trying to drag out stuff. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, you know, if I could just get them to do it all in sequence and write down uh, the – give each uh, event a title so, in their mind you're, so you're with separate it out. You're with MUFON, right? So, so I, I, I got to give you the Tessa rundown because I've created a platform that allows MUFON investigators to, to like to work with us as well. And um, the other thing too is the Ultra Spectrum classification system is on our website. You just go to tessacan.org forward slash oh, Ultra Spectrum. Cool. You can look at it. You can read how it works. I'd be interested in your opinion on it, especially if you were thinking the same thing and you haven't written it. So perhaps maybe you could add to it or we could, or, or you know, if I'm so lucky, it might even enhance what you had going on. Who knows? But it's already, it's already made and it's, and we're using it. And that's coming from cool an evidence perspective from a private investigating uh, firm looking at the evidence, accepting all the phenomenons. We have different types of evidence and like it, it, it's intricate. So like it's like I'm yeah, doing cool. this. I'm definitely going to check it out. And you guys, yeah. you and I have to have a conversation this week too. Yeah, wait, I'm available. I'm also for both of you guys, everybody. I need to book guests for uh, for for July. I don't have anybody, so just that's an open invitation. Yeah, yeah an open invitation that I'm never invited to, even though well, you've been on this show a ton of times. I've had you on twice, but I've never had you on <laughs> one one on one. So you know what. I'm invited. Uh, July. We'll do it. I'm, washing, I'm, I'm washing my hair. Are you washing your hair? <laughs> so if you've got a date for me, I've got my calendar open right now. Wow. Jeez. Uh, well, it's a Thursday. Uh, That's what's uh... up. <laughs> Thursday, 8 p.m. is when uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time is when we roll. Let me just pull up my calendar here to see. I don't think any July, any dates in July are booked. I was considering taking July 1st off, which was Canada Day. You should. Uh, yeah. So, uh, And I do think I have someone pending for the 7th or the 8th, whatever the next the one is. So any, okay. any July, any Thursday, July after I'm that. A, I'm available uh, July 22nd. I'm gone on the 15th and the 29th. So it's, it has to be the 22nd. 
Okay, so I'll put you in July 22nd, and then I'll just, uh, unless you want to give me your email address now, or I can get that from Dave later. Here, I'm going to paste it into uh, the chat. Cool. Yeah, the private, Ryan, if you look to the right, there's a little button that says private chat on the right-hand side. Okay. Uh, All right, I'll take a look at that. She'll put it in there. Okay, thank you. What about you boys? We'll do Dave last. Dude. (laughs) I, I was just telling Joe, we had our mic muted. I was like, that's the dude, like, like people have, uh, uh, referenced your show and like come from our show and, and by vice versa and oh, really? make the wow. connection yeah. like tinfoil okay. hat. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, that's, that's, that's right. That's actually, this is first time, first time I heard of you guys too. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, dude. We, we've heard great things, man. Like, yeah, I would do, I, We'd love to have you. We'd love to have you on the show, man. So right on. I'll do. Well, we do show swaps. That's basically what it's all about, you know. So oh, yeah. uh, let's get connected. I don't know how much time we have because I can't see the screen. But uh, uh, we got 15 seconds here, so I'll get you guys to hush up for a quick second. Thank you to Ozzy, Steve, Jeremy, Th, Chad, and Michael for the super chats. It's a great way to support what we do on this show on a nightly basis. Thank you so much for the love. We say here we go. We pass the halfway point of Spaced Out Radio tonight. My name is Dave Scott. Welcoming each and every one of you to our show. Especially if you like UFOs, because we are going hot and heavy over it tonight with our great panel, which I'll introduce here in a moment. want to remind you that if you've missed portions of this show or others, check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button, our website, spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot, reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show. We continue on with our UFO podcast panel tonight, all looking into what is going to come out of Washington, D.C. and the Pentagon regarding UFOs. Are we going to have any luck whatsoever in getting some great information out? From the Fenton Files on Revolution Radio, we have Lorian Fenton from YouTube UFO Garage podcast. We got Joe Strelsky. He's got a fantastic beard and even better hair. And Ben Jenkins and the man who literally never shaves, Ryan Stacy from Beyond the Tinfoil Hat podcast and the Tessa organization, tessacan.org. Everyone, welcome back. And, and, you know, we were really talking that last half hour about people's reactions. How are they going to react to what is happening around the world, Why, especially with experiencers who are really being left out of this topic. And Joe, I want to start with you on this one, if you don't mind. You know, when we look at this, the the government has really made this a military issue. And we all know, as you stated earlier, this goes way beyond just the United States Navy. We haven't heard from the Air Force, the Marine Corps, the Coast Guard, the United States Army, or even Space Force for that matter. Why do you think it's being so segregated towards just the U.S. Navy? Uh, man, I can't, there's probably a right answer for that, but I, I mean, I feel like if they focus it into one area, there's less questions to be asked. You know, if the Navy just comes out and says, yep, we got, we got this. And then you have the Pentagon, you know, involved, you know, you, you got so many people involved, but when it comes to like the military specifically, like, I think if you, if you just keep it in one little area, I think people are going to ask less, less questions. You know, segmentation. Very true. You gotta ask the right question. Like it's. I think people. A lot of people are asking questions, but just not asking the right question. I'll give you. I'll give you an example. Uh, like I've done. So in my in my CSIS report. Um, so Canadian Current Events Survey. Uh, that's on our website. But at the end, I've included after I've done an investigation on on Canadian cases of, of reported by our pilots here. Uh, I snuck in a, a Tessa case uh, that that was actually by one of our, our Space Out Radio listeners. Uh, I will say, Phil, filthy, you, you, your case has made it into my book, my first book. FYI, I didn't know if you knew that. 
but the but the questions that I had, so he's got a UFO case in which I can confirm that there's video. And I did all the analysis and I linked it to, to sum it up. I linked it to uh, Canadian Forces based in Edmonton. I, I did freedom of information request and uh, I asked them if they had it and it comes back no record count. I did it twice and then I showed them the video and I just said, so, 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 so the question that I asked was, is like, can you identify this object? Because I can confirm um, that this was in your airspace at this time on this date through video evidence. And you've just confirmed to me twice that that you have no record found. And it was at that time that they said, we're not telling you that the event didn't happen. We're telling you we do not have a record. So ask the right question at the right time with the right piece of evidence. Right. So when you go to disclosure and say, don't say do aliens exist, you can say, are you aware that there is a that on this date at this time, this object was in the sky? No, we were not. Well, I can prove to you that it was. Is this ours? No. Well, then are we in danger? Right. So like you got to You got to like you can't just say the aliens exist because they'd be forced to answer. And that's the position we're in with this disclosure part. So uh, how, regardless of how we others feel about Lou, whatever lie you're, uh, side you're on, it, it, it forced their hand to act because he asked the right question and he manipulated the system in the right way that a response is happening. Yeah. But here's the thing. They're well aware of how that happened. I would look forward. I would look into the future and watch what measures are taking place to prevent that same scenario from ever happening again because they now know how the loopholes they now know how that was done and they're going to change their methods to make sure that never happens again because of what has happened as a result of a faulty business so do you uh i'm just like snowballing uh piggybacking off what you're saying so like the questions uh that the very like let's be honest there were like very smart people in this industry that know the right questions to ask. I don't know. I don't think we're one of them, but like there are the people that uh, I'm talking about me and John, I, but well, more myself, but, but <laughs> like, the, do you think that Lou was put in the position because that exact fact, is that kind of what you're saying? Well, well, I'm saying is we forget the fact that he was counterintelligence. Doesn't mean he may not be employed quote unquote, but that doesn't mean he forgot how to run the counterintelligence. He's doing everything he needs to, to do. He's saying everything he needs to say. He yeah. is doing quite well as a position, as a person within that position. People believe him. People like him. People love him. He's approaching all these audiences and all these other things. He's doing everything right. But we can't confirm 100% his intent and motive. Because it's still possible that if we look at the business side of things, that if the Canadian, or sorry, the American government did employ Lou Elizondo and they just wanted to hush him for a little bit because he, it's something that has happened and there was a, a history that they decided not to make public, this is a perfect opportunity for the CEO, which is the president of the United States, to say, this guy did all this stuff and he's not credible and this is why. It's a scenario that is very likely. And that's why I'm waiting to see because it's, it's, it's to see how the business is going to operate on a data leak from within the company. I, I love the way you phrase that, the, the data leak, uh, also PR, right? Like you're yeah. getting at PR with, with any uh, uh, company. It could be a company. It could be a, an individual. But that has been a thing forever, dude. There's like... <laughs> I mean, if, if you watched uh, House of Cards or, or uh, uh, what's the uh, oh, what's the, the the famous show? The Simpsons. The Sim <laughs> <laughs> so here, here, so 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 here here's here's the thing. The next step. This is the puzzle. This is why I'm waiting to find out what's happening. If if that's the scenario, then they can charge people for releasing the information in a legal way, unless the government intentionally leaked. It. They should charge based on these this environment if that all that is true. But if they don't, then that might suggest that they they allowed it to happen, and then you can blanket they, that. Hey, Ryan, they absolutely yeah. allowed it to happen. I've talked to three now. XCI, why? Yeah, I why? talked to three CIA guys, and they all said the same thing. They want this to get out only under controlled situation and what happened was 
uh, Lou and Chris and Jim and Hal and the whole gang there kind of went off script a little bit and especially started with Tom DeLonge. He mm-hmm. started going off script a little bit and then things started snowballing in directions they weren't expecting. And the next thing they knew, they're on the History Channel doing the show unidentified and spilling their guts with all these military guys and the government sitting there going, wait, that isn't what we wanted out of this. This mm-hmm. wasn't our deal. And he gets paid uh, for that, by the way. He yes, exactly. That. That's right. That's Motive. right. So there you go. I mean, I'm just throwing that two cents in because I know for a fact that if Lou had spilled those, uh, you know, got those videos out illegally, he'd be in Guantanamo Bay right now. And that's why no he has. A, that's it. why he has a lawyer. So this is why else would you have a lawyer unless you've done something you shouldn't have done? So that's why. No, like- because he spilled those out long before he got an attorney, and I know all about it. So yeah, no, that was a planned op. That was definitely a planned op that was going along with Two Stars Academy's launch. So then we look at the why, right? So so we we already yeah. don't trust government as a whole. It's it's so what he's done as a counterintelligence officer, whether he's in or out, he still knows how to do it. He, he what Correct. he's done is he's created a safe environment where people are trusting him. Whether his motives are right or wrong, that doesn't matter. People still are are following him. And, and it's easier to trust him than it is to trust the government. So through him, we will trust the government. So, so if that's the intent, then it's still the government. But is that, is, is, is that the intent is to put somebody in the public so that way the government can redeem themselves because they have history and years of them fumbling? Or are they manipulating us? without us paying attention because they want to have control of us. It can go either I th- way. I think it's the latter, but that's just my opinion. You know, yeah. I, they've control. I've been at this game since I was 13 years old. So I'm not going to tell you how long that's been, but it's been a long time. No, and no. At, at 13, I wasn't looking at the politics. I didn't start doing that till I was about 30. That was about, and, 10, years, uh, that was about 10 years ago, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> Thank you. But so bottom gonna, line is, yeah. I uh, if you're not look if you're a, if you're a contactee or even somebody just seen a UFO, if you haven't done your research into who's been running the show since the beginning when it all started with what we called the aviary or the working group or whatever way back in the 80s, if you haven't been following that, then you're not part of ufology as it really stands because that's our true history. The history History of clandestine operations and control. <laughs> Ryan's losing it wait, over there. Wait, but Lori, I got like, so excited. Like, <laughs> I, I know I keep losing my headphones. Can I? Can I just interject for a second? Because Lori, like, we met you la- like two years ago, and we, Joe and I, had n- like we just loved the topic, and then you just blew our minds with this information. So, so I mean, for those that don't know anything about. Is it, is it safe to talk about the working group, uh, the AVA? Oh, absolutely. Like- yeah. Grant Cameron has done extensive work on it, written several books about it. And there have been other people along the, uh, you know, I want to say they're older than dirt now and their books are long forgotten, but everybody's been following these guys. And there is a great video of Melinda Leslie, who's been following it for 28 years. I've been following it for at least 25 that we know of. And, uh, and it's on my MUFON website. I keep it up there permanently because I want people to understand. These are the guys running the UFO community. It's like going to college and not knowing who your dean is. That's what it's like being in UFOlogy. We have all these people running around in the gymnasium talking about their contacts and whatever, but they're not paying any attention to their scholarship or who's running this show, who their professors are, who's telling them what to do and what to believe. Okay. <laughs> that's so, so that's so awesome. I've never <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, if you're going to be that dumb and just run around campus drunk all day long, I mean, seriously, come on. Get your act together. Go watch this video. It's up on MUFONMarinSonoma.com. That's MUFON, M-A-R-I-N, Sonoma, S-O-N-O-M-A, dot com. And what are you laughing at, Dave? Oh, just one of the comments by one of our chatters. 
I, I, I thoroughly enjoy Dave's giddy face, right? Your, your facial expression is like making my entire year right now, Dave. Whoever made that was comment. It, was it my chair? I don't know. Uh-oh. What was it? I'm dying to find out. Oh, let's just move on. We're on trash. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Dave's crying. Uh-oh. Oh, God. It must have been good. It must have been something I said, as usual. No, no. It was a comment from one of our listeners. <laughs> oh my god. Uh-oh. I got to know. I got to know. You didn't see it? Yeah, we we all we all want to know now. All right. <laughs> you I got to I got to I got to no, find Where? out. Let's just continue on here on Space Out Radio as okay. this is a serious topic, people. A well, serious topic. I, I I saw it. You know, we just <laughs> No, no, no. What was it, Ryan? Oh, somebody just <laughs> I, I have a listener who uh, always comments on flatulence, and it made me laugh. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so as I was saying seriously, though, you guys, you've got to understand the history of these guys. You, it, 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 it'll lead you into it, it, understanding who's been controlling what we get to see and how it all happens. That's what, bottom, bottom line for me is if you don't get that part of it, you're missing one-third of the three-ring circus. You know, it's that simple. Or you investigate it for yourself and you accept an opinion based on your own internal experience and you just accept that and you live your life and you be happy and know that you've been touched by an angel. You know, like, exactly. I like exactly. that. You know, I love that. I'll tell you why, you guys. And I'm sorry to take over the show in this manner, but I'm, right I, I'm incensed with the fact that people... I people come to me every day and they go, Lorian, you've got to get regressed. You know, you've just got to get regressed and tell us all, you know, we know you've been taken. Right. And I'm like, I don't want to know. It doesn't matter in my life. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't make anything better or worse. Why do I care if a reptilian had sex with me? Right. You know, it's that simple. So um, unless it was really good, I should be marrying the guy. Right. I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm making light of it for a reason, because people take it so damn seriously that their life has been upset and everything's a trauma. And I can't understand it because personally, I have a job. I have a life. I this is my other thing I do, but it's not obsessing me. You know, and there's this whole, and I, I go back to the story of this young kid. He was finishing his last year of high school. He had one month to go. He saw a big spacecraft over a jack in a box in Sacramento, California. And he wanted to drop everything in his life to become a UFOlogist and get on a stage and talk about UFOs. And I was like, why would you even want to do something that stupid with your life? You know, I mean, I'm not discouraging people to stay out of the UFO community, but I'm saying there is no money. There is no life. It just gets more confusing and it's a giant rabbit hole. And yes, the, the, the whole trip for me is that if you're having an experience, it's a personal experience and you are learning from it and you are touching God or your angels or the devil or whoever it is you need to deal with for your karma and your, and your future true growth as whether you're coming back to this planet or not it's that simple for me so okay i want to ask you guys i want i want to change topics <laughs> here for for a quick second because over the last year especially we have seen a giant influx of brand new ufo podcasts jump up whether it's on youtube or soundcloud or spreaker or wherever it may be everybody is trying to get their two cents and their opinions in which i think is fantastic Okay, because I think the more voices you have out there, the more attention it brings to the topic at hand, which we're all trying to take with a level of seriousness. However, because there are so many different podcasts and everybody allegedly has their sources and the people that they are talking to and they're the only ones who have the proper information out there, I'm, I'm curious, have... Has the, the growing amount of podcasts, in your opinion, on UFOs hurt or helped the community? Joe and Ben, let's start with you guys. Hmm. Yeah, man, I, I, I definitely see how the, the, the waters could be muddied up a little bit. But I think it's kind of the way that you approach it. You know, there's a lot of people who want to tell you the information that they know. They, they want to, you know, it's like, hey, 
listen to me, listen to what I have to say. Right. And it's kind of a, it's kind of a pushy approach, you know, with us, our whole main thing is, Hey, we don't know anything. We love learning though. And if you would like to learn with us, come and listen to the show. We're going to have a good time and we're going to learn because we're not trying to teach you anything. We just want you to hear awesome stuff. The same awesome stuff that we hear, you know, that's why we got into it in the first place was, was the stories were incredible, you know? And so as, as we started doing that, you know, we just wanted people to kind of come along for the ride, you know, normalize it. Like I said, like we just try to treat people like human beings. So I, I think it's just kind of your approach to it, but yeah, I mean, the amount of podcasts definitely can muddy the waters a little bit, especially yeah. if you have a lot of people trying to tell you what they know all right. the time. You know? Yeah, it's. It, it, I don't know, uh, honestly. Like new places, like I, I, I'm being honest. Like I just don't have time to like listen to new stuff. Like I have my people that I like and I trust and I listen to. I, I mean, if anybody else out ha- out there has a, a new show that like has a, a cool perspective, I, I would love to listen to it. But I just the the new podcast like. I only, the only new one is like me and Joe, but the other people that I, I listen to is like Space Out Radio, it's Lori and Fitton. It's like, it's it, it's the people that I've, I've met in person. Yep. And those are the people I listen to, honestly. So my perspective on like new podcasts, I don't have one because- We're, we're like, going to listen to your show after this, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like Ryan's hey, show, like that's yeah, like- yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so to add from that too, see, like I always try to think of the perspective. So again, me looking at the the human beings involved in ufology. Again, I study the experience here. I study the people, and and it's a circuit. There's that marketing campaign. You know, once this one person goes around and hits all these podcasts that have the big views and the big likes and all this other stuff because it's good for rating. Space Air Radio is is a very large following, you know, and there's a lot of people listening. There's a lot of people watching, and he's earned that. But a lot of people would just want to go. That's appealing to get a voice out there because it's large, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the message uh, is wanted to be heard. So with us, our podcast, uh, I have that designed um, to as for the experience here, because it's, 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 it's more so an investigative style um, interview where I am asking you questions about your history based on your bio and everything else. But we're also trying to decide whether or not you're good for the collective. And, and then at the end of that, it's, it's based on the experiencers who comment and talk to us after the fact, whether or not it's something that they like and they digest. So the other thing that we do from the investigative perspective, and I'm, I'm doing a full disclosure here, and a lot of people don't know this, and I've been talking a lot, giving little nuggets to imply, but I might as well be honest, but it's a video testimony. So whenever I get you on and I ask you about your origin story, your intent and everything else that's going on, Years from the future, if you make a mistake or you do something wrong, I go back to that video and say, remember when you said this? Nuggets, so I also use Nuggets I also, are a very powerful thing, man. I I'm also use it as an investigative tool. So I normally have people on once, uh, you know, high profile people, which is also why it's very important. I, I try to get Lou on, but he has not answered any of my emails. But as a PI, we have resources that can confirm they've been read. <laughs> but so <laughs> I've been, well, I would love to have you for an hour. So I'll work on that for you, buddy. All right. Thank I'll, you. I'll work on that for you. We have about 90 seconds before we have to go to break. And once again, I'm not saying that that whole question about the, the influx of podcasters out there is bad for the field. I'm not saying that whatsoever. I think for a lot of people though, who are tuning in to learning about the subject, you know, knowing where to get the proper information is the key that we all have to steer the boat with. There's a lot of responsibility that comes along with this topic of discussion that maybe wasn't there a number of years ago, especially with what's going on now. And the unfortunate part about it is, you know, with everybody being able to claim whatever they want, whether it's journalist, whether it's researcher, whether it's radio broadcaster, we have to take them at the word that they're not pulling the wool over the listener's eyes. And that's the danger of it because there's a lot of good shows out there. Even some of the new ones that I listen to are fantastic. They're well-crafted, well-edited, well-broadcast, very professional in form. But then you hear the opinion instead of the knowledge. 
And that's where the danger starts. When you start quoting opinion rather than uh, quoting research, that's where the danger is for the listeners out there. We have one more hour here on Spaced Out Radio tonight. We have a fine panel of Ryan Stacy, Lorian Fenton from the Fenton Perspective, and from UFO Garage. We got Ben, we got Joe, and I actually I should mention Ryan's podcast as well, Beyond the Tinfoil Hat. We're going to go continue with the UFO topics. We're going to take your questions again in this hour. We'll be back with more Spaced Out Radio right after this. All right, we're clear. Um, I'm going to quickly run my dogs out again. Do, 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 the dogs do you guys do you guys want to stay for the full hour or do you want to call it the night in half an hour? Because we're having a one hell of a good show here. I, I might as well. I'll power you, through. Dave. I'll power through. This is good. Ben, yeah, Joe. Yeah. yeah, I'm Rock, chilling. Rock, yeah. Rock, yeah. Right on. Yeah. Um, All right. I'll be yeah. right back. You guys chat with the YouTube audience. <laughs> So, so full disclosure, I think I think it's me that's making the noises with my. Uh, yeah, who made yeah, the ripper? Who is you, Ryan? Who made, <laughs> the, who made the ripper? Yeah, someone yeah. ripped one, and I I claimed it. I said that's it was hilarious, me. dude, because we literally WD forty'd our chairs like, like before, before the, the show because we've been, <laughs> on, been squeaking on, for weeks on our show. We've been squeaking, dude. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Yeah, well, I've been muting every chance I could get. I mute so that I can't, you guys can't hear anything going on here because I've got dishes being done and I'm typing on the keyboard and you don't want to hear all that crap during the show. (laughs) You working over there, Lorian? Well, Lorian's always working hard. Yeah, I'm, I'm emailing John right now and I'm just, you know, getting through the night, trying to get things accomplished. So, um, yeah, it's been a wild ride here. Multitask. Yeah, no, this is good. This is good. Like considering, at least from my perspective, I, I, I'm happy to oblige and meet you guys for the first time, but we, we seem to be uh, well-connected and well-versed in this is, this is the, how we get stuff figured out by like minds sharing uh, alternative thoughts and coming to those conclusions because those, those commonalities, that's, that's the other thing too, with the, with our studies. We are also, we do a study within a study is we want to figure out like, what the perfect experiencer is, you know, we try to predict the certain person at a certain age, at a certain, uh, certain area is going to have a certain type of experience. And then from there, we take that information and try to make contact. So there's, there's so many elements to, to, to our research. Right. Uh, you do, you do know, and I'm sure you know this, I'm absolutely sure you know this, that Kit Green and uh, Eric Davis and Hal have all that information that you're, that you seek that we will never see. Yeah. And well, I do know that it possessed and I don't trust anybody but myself because uh, so far uh, the, as far as I can tell uh, and move on included, I'm the only one that's insured and bondable to actually provide a legitimate investigations in the phenomenon because I have a background in private investigation. So I don't trust anybody uh, who is not active. Uh, but, I do respect the knowledge and the research that was put in as the pioneers. So I'm also, I'm in this, this stage where I acknowledge the pioneers. I acknowledge what has been done like ballet and, and Heineck for an example, but I'm also acknowledging the fact that they're going to die and then there's nothing. So I'm trying to continue, uh, you know, the next gen, if you will. And in order to figure that out, I have to, I have to have my own research. I have my own uh, theories. I have to have my own um, conclusions based on on the research. But I accept I accept everything. But if they have um, the answers, they do have the answers. And uh, the problem that I see happening right now is there is a whole group of guys your age that are actually being brought in into these dark projects, mm-hmm. and we don't know who they are. We're never going to be allowed to know who they are until they surface um, having the being the spokespeople of whenever Hal and Kit and Gary Nolan and and Jacques and everybody dies, you know, uh, Alexander. I mean, the list goes on and on, 
you know. Um, so they, we don't know who these been, guys are. They could have been a priest. Gonna... I don't know. They could have been priest selected to keep the keep the lie going too. So like they got like depending on again motive and intent. So I get it, but for me, um, I can only trust. I can only trust myself in the work that I do with trying to understand what may really be happening. Because again, I'm looking at it in a totally different perspective than what currently exists. And I'm hoping find like people well, like yourself I, who, I, who understand and I that. So, yeah, I so appreciate what you're doing because the problem we've got is the community doesn't understand that these guys have the answers. The community doesn't pay any attention to these guys having the answers. And they just la- allow it to keep happening without calling them out on the carpet. I mean, not that I want to, you know, I mean, I just, I'd rather just leave them all alone, but we have no way to, to organize ourselves. We're not, you'll, you're going to, maybe you know this already, but it's something I found out. And this is why I stopped doing research with contactees is there is a very prolific amount. And I'm talking like 75% of all contactees who absolutely think they are the most special thing that's ever happened to the universe. And they have a hard time. uh, The ones that are being abducted have a really hard time letting that go. And they, they go from person to person to person looking for an answer that they should be looking for within themselves and asking the ET. And, and it just gets tiring. I mean, I hate to say it. It just gets tiring for the rest of us out there having to deal with people who don't understand that there is never going to be a definitive answer until the day that the, the AET walks out on the Washington, you know, green under the well, monument and says, we're here. When yeah. you get frustrated. All right, guys, I got to cut it. I got to cut, I got to cut it off <laughs> right, right there. But uh, thank you to Cam Loops, Ozzy, Steve, Jeremy, TH in the UK, Chad and Michael for the amazing super chats tonight. Really appreciate it. Here we go with our three. Would you like to connect with us? Head to spacedoutradio.com for all your latest show info. Now, back to Dave Scott and SOR. Here we go with the third and final hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Really do appreciate earning your listening ears here, wherever you are around the world, tuning on in. want to remind you that if you've missed portions of this show or others, check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do us the favor, hit that subscribe button. We welcome in everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates around North America, digitally on TalkStream Live, Revolution Radio, and KPNL. All of our archives are free, as I said, and join us on our website, spacedoutradio.com. Maybe Ben can give us an update when the new website is going to go live. Oh, it's going to go live soon, baby boy. Yeah. We're so close. We are so close. And it looks gorgeous. I have seen it. It looks gorgeous. And uh, follow us on social media, on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show. Continue on tonight with our roundtable discussion from the Fenton perspective, Lorian Fenton. We have Ben and Joe from UFO Garage and from Beyond the Tinfoil Hat and Tessa, we have Ryan Stacy. We're going to kick this off with a question from Solar Warden. And why is nobody is talking to the defense contractor CEOs? Jim Taslett of Lockheed or Kathy Warden of Northrop would know way more than Lou Elizondo. No respect or disrespect to those guys. What do you guys think? Lorian, let's start with you. I think that uh, Solar Warden has a very, very good point because I believe that the people at Lockheed and at uh, um, Jet Propulsion Laboratories, and there are people in the higher, higher up echelon of these guys that know a ton of stuff, a ton, a lot more than most people out there um, in the military that have actually even seen the UFOs on radar and the whole bit. Now, let me point out something very important here. Um, uh, When Ben Rich left, uh, 
or died, or I can't remember what happened to him from Skunk Works, uh, they knew that he knew about uh, UFOs. He talked about it in his book. He mentioned that there was propulsion systems that they were working on, and everybody forgets this information so conveniently. It just blows my mind. And also, um, at one point, and I can't say who it is right now because I've been asked not to, but there was a guy that was in a remote remote viewing course. Uh, I mean, not the remote viewing course, the remote viewing group SRI back in the day that was actually taken to a um, a laboratory. This much I have figured out, like Los Alamos or one of the Berkeley National Labs or one of these places to actually interface with an ET and do telepathic communication with it. So we have people from different programs throughout the military that have interfaced with ET over the years that have been, they've been dropping these nuggets for 30 years and people forget about it and don't remember. I mean, there are people that know stuff that is just mind boggling out there and they can talk about it to a point, but no one cares. No one talks to them. No one, you know, they all think it's brand new. Every day is a brand new day for ufology when the reality is all the information you need to know is back there in 75 years of history and you just got to find it. It's simple for me. I mean, I, I can find any answer to anything if I look deep enough and hard enough in the right places. All right, let's move on to another question here. Danny is asking, will this open up the floodgates for other countries to release what they know as well? Ryan, let's go with you here. That That's what I'm hoping for, right? Because like, I, I do feel like, again, and it's just to piggyback off of the previous question, what I was going to say is is they got to look at the fact that they're private companies. They, they, they get their money from contracts. So you don't necessarily want to spill the beans on someone that's funding the company so so um and in the same respect uh, when we have treaties and war and things we're trying to prevent uh it wouldn't make sense for for a government to to perhaps rat out another country uh and, and without engaging into what's uh, engage into uh, an act of war or treason or anything like that too so i'm hoping that because currently the united states is the superpower of the world and and all these threats and everything that go around that that they would thread that needle and and create that opportunity where we can be like yeah we were in on it as well now that we can talk about it and that's why i think like like at the summit for example that just happened that's that's a that's something that where they were all together they had to have discussed it at that at that place because you know hey is this yours is this yours no it's not ours is it yours no have you seen it like oh yeah that's mine okay cool what are we gonna do about it like that conversation must have happened and then and, and so so if they're all they're either all in on it or someone's got secret tech like i mean i'm going off on a tangent here but the short long story short is i hope that that's what happens i, I hope to in what you happens. got a ghost behind you is it you making that noise What's you got poultry guys in there, man. I see things moving around, noise dropping. You hear that? It's a weird clicking noise. I was like, is that you going on? <laughs> to not me. I'm just sitting here. <laughs> All right, let's move on here. Lorian, I want to ask uh, this question from mm, in our chat room. Are my labs real? Can you discuss this in detail? Um, my labs are very real. I can't go into very much detail right now because it's not the show for it. But if you, oh, um, we have time, ever we want have, we have to... some time. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, it's absolutely real. It's the military, uh, re abducting people after they've been abducted by aliens to find out from them what they learned on the ships from the aliens, uh, the consciousness connection between them and the aliens, the physical things they did, the aliens did to them. It goes on and on and on. And they use it also in other ways too. They use it to, um, uh, question, I'll, I'll use an example, Rendlesham Forest. I, I know for a fact, I know the CIA pilot who flew the FBI and the CIA guys to Rendlesham to debrief. And when I say debrief, I mean my lab 
the guys that were all there. They were all put under some type of mind control. They were also uh, hypnotized. They were put on drugs. They were, you know, the whole gambit just to get the information out of them the best way they could. Now, what people don't understand, and this is important to remember, folks, when those guys, those military guys are putting you on drugs and hypnosis and doing this to you to get information from you, it's not because they want to do that as to get the information. What it does is it breaks down the walls of your mind, creating pockets of distruth within what you really saw. Okay, now I'm going to say that one more time. It breaks down the 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 things that your mind creates within your story or your vision or your spectrum of what you thought was reality and only brings out to them what you actually saw so in mm-hmm. my opinion they're not doing anything horrific to you they're doing it the best way they know how to get to the real truth of the situation without all the things you're adding in like the screaming that you'd be doing during something that happened to you or you know you felt pain from something you thought was a hot searing poker when it might have just been a pen i mean we don't know so your mind plays tricks on you and the reason they have developed those those protocols is because they need to get to the truth not the fluff the things your mind has added to it to make it emotionally uh compelling for your brain to either remember it not remember it whatever okay so i'm just saying i know that that happened to the guys at rendlesham the guys at rendlesham don't know that happened to them because they weren't the outside witnesses bringing the guys there to do it the doctors the my labs guys what have you the military guys um so and and that just it goes on and on there's so many applications in my labs um and it does uh lately and i and i hate to say this because i really i'm not sticking up for the guys that do the my labs but i'm saying there's some kind of faction that has happened within the military that these guys have gone very clandestine and um they are very hidden and even the guys in the military don't know much about these guys doing the my labs work my guess is this and this is my final thought on it for tonight is that they're part of the secret space program and so it's very difficult to even find out who these guys are and final thought my guess now my hypothesis now is that a lot of these guys are severely mind controlled themselves so they don't even know they're doing it that's heavy I can't let you off that easy, Lorian. Like your final thought, like the secret space program. Do you? I've got to know. Like where? What? Do you have an idea of where the origins are? I'm sorry, Dave. I mean, I, I don't mean to like. Oh, take over the show. I, I'm just. Uh, sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here running my show, right, Dave? Uh, I'm just. I'm just a guy. I'm who, no, I think it's. I, I think it's a very healthy question. Go for it. <laughs> Well, my personal opinion is since I have seen a giant, and I'm calling huge triangle, that materialized above my head in a crowd of 12 people, and the other 10 people were all too busy looking in a night vision goggle on a camera stand, and when I started screaming, UFO, UFO, they all looked into the camera you know, the lens of the goggle looking for this UFO when it was right over the tree. I mean, it's like right there, right? And one other person saw it with me, so I do have a witness. And what I felt from that experience was not what I felt from the same triangle experience I had back in 2011, where I got a download. I knew they were talking to me. I knew they were not of this earth running that ship okay this one i got none of that all i got was this thing materializing i'm freaking out because i'm thinking it's going to fall on my head because i didn't think the guy knew how to drive it because it was wobbling and i and i should have known better it was not wobbling it was the plasma field around it that was so hot it makes it look like a mirage so it looked like it was wobbling but it wasn't and uh, then it turns off all of its lights and this thing takes off faster than, I mean, it's gone. It's just gone. I, I saw it leave and it was gone in a half of a second, literally. And um, 
I know it was not alien. I know it was ours. I did not get a feeling of aliens at all. And Melinda Leslie has been on one of the big Aurora triangles. Absolutely. Remembers it completely. Remembers the guy. She can draw the faces of the guys that were my labbing her at the time. So, and they're not the only ones. I mean, I've got stories and I've got, oh my God, back in 2011, when I started my uh, mind control stuff, the secret space program became the first thing out of the gate for all of the guys that were talking to me. Here's a quick story about that. And then we'll, I'll drop the subject. But one guy is literally at home with his parents doing the dishes and he wakes up from his mind control operation and he doesn't even know how he got into his parents' house. He doesn't know what day it is. He doesn't know where he is. I mean, knows he's home with his parents. He has no idea how he got there. And he asks his parents, what day is it? And, and they said, yeah, we picked you up. You're, you know, you're free from your job, you know, your job in the military, blah, blah, blah. We picked you up six months ago. Don't you remember any of this? And he's like, I don't remember any of it. So, I mean, literally lost two years of his life. Doesn't remember any of it. Okay. And he's not the only one. I have probably 35 to 50 people that I know that have literally woken up somewhere and gone, how in the hell and when did I get here? You know, and they were dealing with the military. A, a great person to read about that is Misha Johnston's books and also Niara Isley. Niara didn't have as much missing time, but she had some extraordinary secret space program uh, experiences. I'll leave it at that. Very interesting. All right, let's go to another question. This one comes from Danny, who is asking, President Obama said this could be the start of new religions. What do you think he possibly meant by that? Who wants to jump in? Ah, oh, ufology is a religion. It is a it, no, uh, Ryan! Don't do yeah. it! No! It's a little culty yeah. so, sometimes. So it's very culty. I mean, we all have followers. We all have this like intense, like new religions. Yes, yeah, I, I think it will destroy, it, or it already has, uh, you know, destroyed. Uh, if if the pandemic hasn't destroyed faith already, uh, you know, like it's perfect opportunity uh, to introduce the the new CEO. So like. Uh, it's yeah i would i would i would i would think so because to accept the possibility would 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 then bring other questions such as is is that like are you my mother are you my father like you know like we we would want to identify how that individual plays in what type of religion First of all, and we can trace that back to the ancient astronaut theory. You can go back to Sumeria, Mesopotamia, and you can go to Babylonia, and you can go to Egypt, depending on 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 all these all these parallels within the ancient uh, astronaut theory too. So we would at least get a clarification uh, that yeah, that was me. Uh, you know, I was here so many years ago. That's not what I said. Uh, and you guys blew that up. Sorry, it took me so long to get here. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I, I love that so much already. <laughs> so so like it, it will. It, it will have to change because, or as the, as the, uh, was it the Catholic church, the, the, um, Vatican, I remember uh, many years ago or a few years ago, well, when they launched their, um, uh, observatory. So the, so, so their scapegoat acknowledgement that, uh, aliens exist was that humility that like, if, if God made us, it would be, you know, we must accept the possibility that God made other life as well. So, so that was kind of like their way of saying that, yeah, aliens exist, but we're still in charge. <laughs> so, so, yeah. you know, so yes. And that's that, why. So, so when you meet, when you're talking about like the Catholic religion, who's been very open to like the extraterrestrial uh, aspect, it's almost like they're almost grasping it at, at a, at like a last ditch effort of, of control. Cause it, it, I'm not saying I'm like putting putting that on you. I'm just like that's what I got from it, and and kind of that's kind of what it feels like. But it also the flip side of that, it feels very beautiful. It's like they're very accepting. Um, I I think you, uh, religion can be very beautiful and 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 work for people in a very awesome way. Uh, I think that humans ruined it for sure. Uh, Joe and I talk about the podcast podcast all the time. But like, uh, yeah, there's some weirdness going on, and uh, 
there's many different religions. So, so what religion, all of them would have to be gone and whether or not that is accepted that now. So it's some, some religions might accept this new religion as demonic and demon yes. and the antichrist and all these other things, depending on what perspective you get. Yeah. You know, so, so you, you kind of get a, and what better, and a, what better opportunity than now. That's another thing we haven't really talked about. Why, why is this happening now? We're still in the midst of a, of a, of a global problem. Yeah. It's, and we still have to recover from that global problem. So why not recover from everything at the same time? Yeah. D- Dave was like, dude, like, I'm just going to like put you on a pedestal for a second. Like you're the per- first person who said it. Like why now? Mm-hmm. And, and it's such a simple idea, but uh, you're the first person who said it. So I have to give you props for that. Thank you, my brother. Thank Seriously. you. And it is an important question to this day. Because look, when here's here's what I'm go, what's going through my head is we got about four and a half minutes before we got to go to break at the bottom of the hour. Marco Rubio came out and said, "We need to know what's going on. We need to bring this to the public. We need the public to understand: Is it Russia? Is it China? Is it potentially aliens?" Remember the famous saying where he says, "Well, I hope it is aliens and not one of our adversaries who has more technology than us that we can't figure out." All right. He wants to be public. He's proud that they're going to bring the UFO or the UAP story to the public. And now we're hearing it's going to be redacted after redacted after top secret, top secret, top secret. And out of the 78-page report, we may see anywhere from as low as four pages to up to maybe 20 of those pages. Where's the honesty there? Where is the honesty in regards to everything? And that is what hurts. You know what I'm saying? This is where if the media had any scruples in knowing how to cover this topic, they would call him out on that saying, look, you said back in December, October, November, that you were going to bring this to the forefront. You were going to bring it to the public. The public, the American public needs a right and has a right to know. And now we're hearing redaction after redaction hidden by top secret and and national defense and national security which we all knew was going to happen but once again we caught him in a lie doesn't matter whether he's republican or democrat that's irrelevant the fact is we caught him lying you know just like we caught president obama lying where back in the day he always said he asked the question and was told there's nothing there. Yet now you look at him, he's acting like the president should be acting, like Biden should be acting, in talking about this subject. And he knows the entire script. So we caught him lying. All right? Yet nobody is talking about it. Why now? Why Why are they lying? That's, that's, you need the answer to that question. Do you why think, lie? Do you think that they spoke too soon without really realizing what, they were asking for or getting into, you know, because I, I, I almost wonder if like Marco Rubio 10 years ago would have ever thought, oh, I'm going to try and get these UFO. I don't think he released. knew about it. I think, I think he was caught off guard when Elizondo and Mellon yeah. had, had a conversation with the intelligence committee. That's what yeah. I think happened there. But, but the fact is we need to be able to call these out. Our voice as people is supposed to be the mainstream media. They are supposed to be our police, our judges, our jury. They're supposed to be our the public's protectors. But over the years when they have gone through and and talked about, you know, taking political sides, especially on the national level, that's where that all went out to hell in a handbasket, right? And we lost our voice. Now, politicians who know this, especially when you get into something as top secret as this, they know that the media, the way the 24-hour cycle works now, is not going to have time to really investigate any stories because our media has gone from being our protectors and our voice to being a bunch of clickbait for corporate advertisement. And I hate to say that because... I love journalism. I love the media career. I love what it's supposed to stand for, and we're not there anymore. It doesn't matter which side of the border you're on. It, it it's turned into horse crap, and it needs to be called out for what it is. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. I, I agree. I agree. That's that's it, one hundred percent. 
it's like, it's almost like the, the you know it, especially in the united states man i mean when you when you talk about like journalism and going out and getting the real story like i mean all of these these outlets are 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 kind of controlled they're all they're all bought and paid for you know that's not that you know they're comfy with their nice little paycheck they're not going to try and stir the waters or anything they're saying exactly what they want you to hear and especially when most of the media outlets are are you know checked and run through like certain intelligence agencies that have their finger on the pulse of everything so of course if it has if that news goes through them they're gonna say nope 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 this is what you can report this is what you can report this is what you can report go for it have you guys heard the 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 behind the scenes uh voicemail and in conversation from the the uh the lady that was was fired recently from from cbs i was just gonna bring that up well you guys gotta watch that let's talk about it when we come back because we're going to continue the panel right through the top of the hour. They're going the full show. Lorian Fenton from the Fenton Perspective. Ryan Stacy from Beyond the Tin Foil Hat. And Tessa. And from UFO Garage, Joe Strelsky, Ben Jenkins. We'll be back with the final half hour of Spaced Out Radio right after this. There we go. We're clear. Sorry, I was like talking to my Joe. I yeah. swear to God, you've got that stoned on Dr. Pepper look going on. <laughs> well, I, I am stoned, <laughs> and I do have some Dr. Pepper. So. Dr. <laughs> oh, good. You guys are well. One of you drinks diet, and the other one drinks regular, right? Yeah, he's that yeah, diet guy. I'm the diet oh, guy. Oh man, you never drink the diet stuff. That aspartame oh. will kill you. That's what I was telling him, but he doesn't believe me. I believe you. It's just the aspartame. I'm addicted to it. <laughs> so get, get get this. I'm allergic to aspartame. Oh, no and shit. and so what happens is my tongue swells up when I Dude, have... Dude, my, my, my... uh. Okay, well, I won't finish this. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah! So anyways... Uh, <laughs> When 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 we when my buddy when my my buddy Kirk and I we used to go to the bar when we were single we were in our mid thirties and and we we'd go to the bar for a couple of drinks on a Friday night or something and I always ordered a Coke or an iced tea and so he he hated the fact that that I drank Coke and so one day he orders me a drink and I you know I went to the bathroom he orders me a drink and because I'm his designated driver. And he orders me a Diet Coke. And I'm just, it's one of those hot summer nights. I'm dying of thirst. Take a big swig from my straw. I'm like, dude, did you only diet? Did you give me a diet? He's like, he's like what? I'm like, dude, you got me a diet pop. My tongue is swelled up. Yeah. You sound like you sound like me on like four glasses of wine, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's how I sound. Oh, yeah. Dude, it so was you're, you're, freaky. So your tongue like swelled up? Yeah. So. I'm like, dude. So I had to drink a bunch of water and, and calm my mouth down, and you know, it wasn't too bad because I only had like one sip. But uh, yeah, it was freaky, dude. That's crazy, dude. Oh yeah. Whew. I don't really think I have any well, allergies. I was gonna say, dude, if you were Joe, if Joe was allergic to Dr. Pepper, I mean, I wouldn't be here. It's funny, like uh, our, our. I would drink more water. <laughs> I I, uh, I stayed up too late last night. I I, I got to uh, hang out with a buddy I haven't seen in a while. We we stayed up at a bar and uh, I came home at like eleven, dude. Like that's pretty early. That's and then my my body in the morning was like, oh really? You're gonna drink Doctor Diet Doctor Pepper? Really? And I said, like my body was like, I hate you. I just I, I felt terrible like, for like two hours. And finally, I drank a glass of water. I felt great. You got it. What you got to do is you wake up immediately. And you drink a big old glass of water, yep. and then you get a big greasy cheeseburger yes. and Dr. Pepper. And yeah, well, cure. not all of us live near a water burger. Powerade, Powerade or Gatorade, because when you're when you're hungover, you're dehydrated. Yeah, and what's and what's Gatorade and Powerade's job? It's to rehydrate you. It's also like yeah, but oh, the Dr. Oh. Pepper has the caffeine and it has the the fructose corn syrup that will go into your stomach and keep you from throwing up. Really, it helps. I didn't I didn't really know that. Does, yeah, I, I did not know yeah. that. I haven't been that my, drunk in a long time. 
I knew that I knew Lorian you would knew you would know why it's so magical. <laughs> I didn't know that until just now, but also No, it's absolutely true, man. And when I had the hangover, Dr. Pepper, and then after I got the Dr. Pepper in me so I would not throw up the water, <laughs> I would start pounding either water or Gatorade. Oh, yeah. But that I'm was a, after. I'm a Pedialyte yeah. guy. I man, dude, when you're dehydrated, you get the Oh, Pedialyte. have you guys oh. ever tried Oh, you got kids coming, so Emetrol, or you got kids on the ground. One of you does. Yeah. So Emetrol works wonders too. It's it's for kids for nausea. It works great for a hangover. That's awesome. All right, we got uh, about uh, ninety seconds here, guys. Ninety seconds. Grab a Dr Pepper real quick. Mm-hmm. Quickly. Right. <laughs> See no. now he's, he's running to the refrigerator for another don't, Dr don't trip. Pepper. Don't trip. By the way, Joe, your logo looks amazing. Well, oh. Let's zoom it in there. Just right there. Yeah, dude. There it is. It's all about the branding. <laughs> that, that that logo looks absolutely amazing. I mean, the, the way you guys market UFO Garage with that major logo back there, it, 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 it's outstanding. I love it. Yeah, dude. It's uh, it's we're we're pushing the boundaries over here. You know, we're trying to do things that uh, you know other people aren't doing, and uh, that's one of them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, Pioneers, me... dude. Yeah, look. Oh, there's the dog. Oh, hi, Nibbler. Oh, hi, puppy. <laughs> yeah, He's there. just looking at us like we're all crazy. Yeah, he goes, <laughs> you fucking guys talking UFOs. Hey, uh, quickly here before we come back, thank you to Ann. Thank you to Gloops. Thank you to Ozzy, Steve, Jeremy, TH, Chad, and Michael for the amazing super chats. Really do appreciate the support. Thank you to all our new subscribers and all the veterans who are literally here every single night tuning us in. Here we go with the final half hour. We've rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Really do appreciate earning your listening ears. Want to remind you that if you've missed most of this show or others, check out our free archives. All you got to do is go to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Remember that you just hit that subscribe button. That's all I ask for in return. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio, and on Instagram, at Spaced Out Radio Show. For the final time tonight, we introduce our UFO podcast panel, leading into June 25th, and the UFO files that are allegedly going to be leaked put out to the media, whatever you want to call it, from the Pentagon on unidentified aerial phenomena. We are joined tonight from UFO Garage, Joe Strelsky and Ben Jenkins. From the Fenton perspective, Lorian Fenton and Ryan Stacy with Tessa at tessacan.org and the podcast Beyond the Tinfoil Hat. And, you know, the more we look into this, the more we are all speculating on what could happen, what might happen, what will be released, what will not be released, how long is it going to take before the leaks of the top secret files to come out. Is anybody expecting more videos? Anybody expecting more real good, juicy information? Lorian, let's start with you. Gosh, when you're looking for that dang mouse to unmute, it's always a problem, isn't it, Dave? Oh, I know. I'll tell you what. Been there, uh, done that. Anyhow, um, so do I think there's going to be any more videos coming out? Um, actually, yes, I do, but it's not going to happen right now. It's going to happen in July or August after the kind of the disappointment of what's going to happen tomorrow settles in. Um, and then they'll use, uh, you know, uh, Jeremy Corbell or George Knapp or somebody that they've, you know, put the crown on for that six months or four months or whatever to be their little media dog is what I call them, you know, because they, they get anointed for a while. Then they get to, you know, do the stuff and put out what they want them to put out. And, uh, 
yeah, it'll happen again. We'll get another, you know, leak of footage. And this will just keep going on for another couple of years this way. I mean, I hate to say it. I don't see anything really earth shaking happening for quite some time, at least a year and a half. I mean, I hope I'm wrong, but I, I think there'll be videos, but I don't think there's going to be any earth shaking major disclosures with the capital D. I do hope I'm wrong. Ryan, what's your thoughts? I Like I said at the beginning, I just want it to happen so I know what I'm doing next because I I have lots of plans for the next generation of ufology and paranormal studies, and it still remains the possibility that they might tell everything tomorrow. And if they do, it'll save me a hell of a lot of work if I have some if someone else spills the beans. And, and also on the investigative perspective, uh, when I'm uh, creating an academy to teach uh, our methods on uh, private investigative methods on, on the on the on the subject, I might have a control uh, a, a control event that I could compare other other cases to. So so there's a lot of information that could come out of it. Um, but again, I just want direction because I got again lots of stuff to do too. And my question actually I wanted to ask is if anyone is aware of how much information a document actually has because with the Canadian documents that I have, a lot of people have posted these documents. Here's the story. They read it and that's it. But there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of information on these documents that can be traced and leaked and, uh, and there's leads that could be followed from a single piece of information. So I was just wondering, so that's another thing that I'm going to be doing as well. This would be the first American document, which I will have to apply my analysis on where I'll be able to pull uh, corroborating evidence from this document. So again, direction. I just, I just want to, I want the evidence and then I'll know, I'll know what I'm doing tomorrow afternoon. That's it. One of the great debates. Uh, Go ahead, Lorian. I just got to say one quick thing here. I I don't know if they're going to give us anything to follow Ryan. I, I hope they do. Um, and I'm planning on them doing it. I do really hope they give us something to dig on, but I'll tell you what, I was part of the JFK drops Mm -hmm. and there were 4,000 and 8,000 documents and here and there. And we went through hell going through that, sifting through it, finding anything that could take us to the next step. And it was very hard. So on our website, tessacan.org, you can look up government documents. I put three government documents on there to display the format on how, as an example of how there's more evidence, depending on how you look at it, with the single uh, document from the government, I was able to identify names of people, which are in all these documents. But from those names, I was able to find family members. I was able from family members, I was able to find locations. From locations, I was able to find numbers. From numbers, I was able to find jobs, and I was able to find. Oh, oh absolutely! So I mean, much. that's how it's done. Right. But how do you? Yeah, but will they give us those nuggets to follow? That's what I'm saying. They may be getting smart, Ryan, which is what I'm worried about, is they're going to start blacking out everything so we have nowhere to go. Very very true. You can't forget the past. But they so, are. Right. That, that's the problem. <laughs> they are. They are not wanting to talk about anything previous to 2004. You link, you link what we already know from the past to understand what they present in the future. So, well, so the true. documents that I'm looking at are from the Canadian history past. That I've only done three to already have it figured out. That information that I have of the relationship that Canada has with the United States government. I just looked at three, and there's thousands of documents. That's why I'm waiting to figure out whether, you know, which of the, the thousands of files I have in my cabinet behind me I'm going to be releasing moving forward. There's, just, there's a plethora of stuff because I'm either A, for disclosure or B for disinformation. That is what I need to decide from this document because I have enough evidence to go either way. And it, I don't have, I want to decide definitively what's best for the people. And, and that document will, will define a lot of things for, for my, my intent in this race. Just that's where I'm at with that. And, and you Pretty know, cool. you know, the whole idea, Joe and Ben, that, you know, there is going to be a lot of redacted information that we shouldn't be, you know, happy with what we are going to see. You know, we're looking at this from the eyes of UFO people. 
And I know earlier in the show we discussed a little bit that the mainstream public may look into this and say, holy cow, I can't believe this is real. I can't believe that this is actually going on, you know, since 2004. Do people, or do you think this will open up the gates for people to actually look past 2004, go back to the Phoenix Lights, go all the way back to Roswell? Or do you think this is going to segregate people into this phenomena that happened 17 years ago? Man, I hope it would encourage people to go back uh, into the history of it. I, I kind of feel like the topic in itself like almost requires you to go back into the history because we can we can go off of you know all the recent stuff but that's gotta just open a box of curiosity to want to know where all that came from and if they have all this knowledge about stuff that's happening currently well they had to have something to build off of for me it just seems like it would be the natural progression to want to go back into the history and look look into it but I also enjoy things like that. I enjoy history and, and, and looking back at stuff. So, you know, me personally, like I said, I think it would be cool and I hope it encourages people to do it. Whether or not we get whatever information we're looking for, you know, from the outside, I, I, I think it could be encouraging. Ben, your thoughts. Do you have a thought? Uh, yeah, I have a thought. Uh, it's, 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 I guess it's more uh broad i think this thing is it, a lot of people in the in the community see it as like hey look i've dedicated a lot of time uh and i have i i know everyone here that is investing their time into not even listening to the show has invested their time into this topic and there's this level of like hey I want some vindication here. I want I want some some uh, some validation here. But I think what is most important past all that, like yeah, okay, you're right, fine, cool. I think what's most important is to realize that the government is is finally going to say that hey, you you guys were onto something. Maybe not all the details were right, but here's what we can give you to not uh breach security uh you know we 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 protect you right like in 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 a certain way that's kind of how i see like the government saying like hey this is how we can like not tell you every every aspect of of what we're keeping from you cuz we're we're trying to protect you here so uh, yeah there's a give and take so i hope that we tomorrow if not the weekend uh which is it's going to be an interesting day tomorrow and the weekend but I hope that we can take it in a positive uh, aspect and, and realize like all of the work that been, that has been put into this is not for naught because the people that are going to be into this subject just because of what's happened in this past year, if it's not this past year, it's this past month, it's this past week, and it might be just tomorrow that might spark that interest in that next person that might want to look into this phenomenon like that, uh, there, there wasn't there like this this elementary school uh, girl that looked into uh, this phenomenon of, of of the presidents all like having a uh, uh, an, an an equal ancestor. It's it's got to be something like that. Like it we're, we're all gonna be what? we're all gonna be connected in some way. I think there's a positive thing to take away from it. Melinda Leslie, who is in our chat room, she will be on our round table on our next show. She says, I may disagree with all of you. I'll go with what I'm hearing, and that's we'll be pleasantly surprised. There will be stuff in it. Granted, not much, but plenty to keep the government investigation going. Lorian, you know Melinda better than anybody here. What do you think of her comment? I think Melinda's uh, right, but I also think we are absolutely right, too, because we don't know, Melinda, until tomorrow what's going to come out. And uh, they may redact everything that uh, you think might be coming out, and they may not. And I may be really surprised. So, you know, I don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens, like Ryan says, and see um, 
if there's anything that Ryan can go after, you know, on an investigative level that I can look at and say, well, this quote, you know, this corroborates what people have been telling me over the years or, you know, whatever, or, or my military friends that they might get involved and say, no, that never happened. You know, and I've got proof it never happened. We may be able to catch them in lies. We may be able to catch them in the truth. We don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see what they give us. And at that point, it really, it's going to define for me whether these guys really are, are playing ball with us as a community or whether they are doing a game that we're not involved in. In other words, are they embracing us and giving us some truth or are they going to still keep playing the game of we're not going to tell you guys because you just don't need to know or you don't have enough high enough clearance to know or whatever they yeah. think is or you can't handle the truth you know, I, or whatever they're whatever game they're playing this month. I, I love that. Like Lorian, like I, I, I fully believe that there's there's a high probability that there is there's there's a sect of government or whatever that we just don't know about that kind of calls a shot that does not care what we think about it. And we could do whatever whatever we want with this information, right? Like yeah, they've been, yeah. they, they've been in control of this. And this is like my conspiratorial mind, right? Like, uh, like, and I think this is like a natural avenue uh, of anybody that's into this subject, where it's it's pretty easy to slip into that little little detail. Like, hey, it'd be pretty easy if if you had enough money and power and influence that you you could keep a secret. Okay, like secrets are not that hard to keep. If, if you're if you're in the know and, and know if you've talked to people that are really good at keeping secrets, uh, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see. Like, yeah, the uh, what's going to come out is going to be interesting. Well, Melinda has a really good point about there may not be much, but plenty to keep the government investigation going. See, no matter what UFO community thinks of this whole thing, it's going to spark the the government to start paying attention to the guys that are running the UAP desk. It's that simple. It's going to become a thing within the government. And, you know, so be it. It's time. That's what I say. So, so to talk more on that, add to that, to the thought that just came to mind as well is when Dave mentioned earlier that that like we are we are a percentile of of the population that that are in the know. So we we are also tainted back and forth that we're able to have a a what if scenario on either side of the fence. But when this is released, there's going to be a majority of people who have no idea of the history, no idea of any of this stuff. And they're just going to accept it at face value under whatever circumstances they're in. So we're going to have a plethora of people accepting this with new interpretation. So, so I just kind of want to put reference out there to, to for, for the experiencer perspective that, that there will be plenty of opinions on this document tomorrow. There will be plenty of opinions moving forward on the interpretation of this document. Do not take that any opinion, even myself included, for uh, for 100%. Look at the document yourself, formulate your own opinions based on it, and stick to the facts. And the documents will name things that had happened, and these are what have happened, or they didn't happen. If they're missing stuff, maybe the information doesn't exist. If it's redacted, don't draw to conclusions and assume that it's it's something else. Focus on the evidence. And that's what I will be doing is simply analyzing what the facts are. And then because I know that everyone's going to speculate, yeah. including the people that have no freaking idea that this is about to drop tomorrow. Just imagine it is aliens. The whole world is going to rock tomorrow if that is the case. So, so disclosure really is... We are disclosure, right? Like, not just the people that have a, a podcast or a radio show, but it's like people who trust their 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 uh, their interpretation of this this uh, this media or this these facts, as you're saying, Ryan. Like, mm-hmm. 
look, man, like I, I would trust my, my older brother to read me some shit. Cause he's like the most, you know, he, he, he's a, a smart individual who pays attention to the facts. He's most people would say he's always a conspiratorial mind. Like I would trust his mind more than anyone. Uh, I feel like the same thing's going to happen in, in, in the ufology community where like, it is us. That is what's going to happen. We have to sit back and wait. And I hope that, that the community won't jump to conclusions and go buy a bunch of toilet paper and just like, <laughs> wait a couple days. And, like, just, you know, some, you know? will, some won't. So it's very important moving forward. As I said, with the experience your support association, our mandate is to, is to make sure that, we play on both sides and stay neutral and focus on the facts and not speculate it while accepting all possibilities. We, we're not debunking. We're just not ready to agree with you right away. Yeah. We need to investigate. Mm-hmm. Right. So, That's so awesome. this is from, so I don't know how I'm going to deliver it because nobody ever follows my crap anyways. And I seem to be only get attention when I'm on Dave's show. So maybe I'll have to come on Dave's show to get my analysis, but thank you. Thank you, Dave. Oh, Hey, every now and again, we allow you here, you know, it's like, uh, <laughs> you know, but I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. With the two in the top meeting you guys for the first time. I've heard you guys talk yourself down so many times, you know, like I'm in the fight too. You know, welcome somebody. Guys, we, we have two minutes left, and quickly, uh, 30 seconds or less, each and every one of you, what do you expect with the report? Lorian, we'll start with you. I expect that we're going to get some information we, we unexpected, some information is going to be missing, and I don't think it's going to be earth-shaking. That's just my take right now. Maybe tomorrow. I hope I'm I'm completely wrong. I hope we get aliens exposed, Tic Tacs are from another universe, and the world <laughs> is going to explode tomorrow with disclosure. I hope that's the truth, but I'm not looking forward. I don't think it'll happen. But all right, that's me, Ben. Let's get your opinion. Oh my God, thirty seconds. Oh my God, go. I, we're all aliens. <laughs> we started it all, and we just forgot about it. I'm done. That's it. <laughs> Joe. Oh, man. Uh, you know, like I said, my hopes aren't super high, uh, I, but I do hope we get, you know, at least enough information for, you know, like people like Ryan to, to continue to be able to build on this thing and like really like create a future for it. So if we can get anything at all that's important, a little bit of something is better than absolutely nothing. And Ryan, you got the final word, man. Yeah, for me, it's direction. I got a whole bunch of plans and I, for the future and direction, and I need to know which path I'm taking. So tomorrow, uh, we'll close a lot of doors, and I'll know what door remains open, and then I look forward to the future. You know what? It's one of those things, guys, and, and I'll give my quick opinion on, on it here as well. It's one of those things where we really have the opportunity to be at our best. And I really hope that everybody in this community, no matter what happens, looks at this as a positive move for as much negative that is going to come out of it. We are taking baby steps to get closer. And as I was told by one insider, this is three phases. Phase one started in 2017, where we started hearing the fact that there is a phenomena out there we can't explain. Phase two, which starts now, is... They're here. We don't know what they are. We don't know where they came from, but we need to investigate this now. Phase three, I see a minimum of three years down the road to a maximum of 30 years down the road is, ladies and gentlemen, we are not alone in this universe. And that's where it has to stand. And as much tension as there is going to be in the UFO community moving forward here, because everybody's going to want the scoops, everybody is going to want to to be at the forefront of this story We really have to see if we can work together and make it one final accurate story. Lorian Fenton, Ryan, Stacy, Joe, and Ben from UFO Garage, thank you for coming on in. We've got Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thal rocking in the background with Little Brother is watching. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio, rocking us in and out of every single show. 
Get your horns up for the guitar god himself. Special thanks to everybody listening in at home, at work, in your cars, wherever you may be. Thank you to everyone in our chat rooms tonight on YouTube, Twitch, LGAB, Revolution Radio, Spreaker, the Facebook, Space Travelers Club, and all the snarkers hanging on out on Twitter at hashtag Spaced Out Radio. Remember, this show is copyright by Spaced Out Radio and SOR Media Ventures Limited. Thank you so much for choosing to share your evening with us, because together, my friends, we own the night. Mr. Bumblefoot, we need a favor. We need you to take us home. Yes, the Wu train has docked for the night, but soon, my friends, we shall ride again. Your seats are always available. Your tickets never expire. And if you want to bring a friend, yep, we've got room for them, too. Good night.